Well, it's finally election night. The breakdown starts now. Welcome to the special election night edition of The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson. And we have been preparing for this moment for two freaking years, it feels like. <laughs> it's been the perpetual midterm election cycle. And we are finally here. Uh, we're probably not going to know all the results tonight. It's that it's complete. It's not over. It's almost like a horror movie where you think it's over. It's not. Um, but we're going to know some things uh, tonight, and we will, are are happy to bring some of our Lincoln Project family in to talk more in depth about specific races where we have been working. We're going to show you some of the ads that we put out during this cycle. And Rick, um, before we get into all of that and bringing our folks in with us, I just want to get a sense from you where you're at. I'm in a, I'm in a mixed place. I'm trying to be Zen. Um, but where are you right now in this moment as polls are closing, we're starting to get some results and um, everyone's anxious to see where, what we wake up to tomorrow. I mean, so far, there are very few surprises on the board because we still have a lot of uncertainty in most states. Look, there was never a shock that Ron DeSantis was going to beat Charlie Chris like a drum. Right. That, that, so I, I think DeSantis right. is actually underperforming tonight, given that he spent 50 plus million dollars and Charlie basically had a gift card from Sam's Club and some pocket change <laughs> in his in his car. Um, so, you know, Florida was is, I think one thing we can learn already, just to be very clear with folks, Florida is a red state. It is not a purple state. It's not a swing state. It is not a blue state. It's a red state. Yeah, it's and, full-flown red now. And that that is something people just have to grapple with and figure it out. Kevin Kate, uh, you know, friend of friend of ours from Florida, said, you know, at this point, the 2026 non-party affiliated candidate will probably outperform the Democrat. You've got to either burn the party down and rebuild it from scratch um, or, or give it up and let it die. And yeah. he's not wrong. Right. Yeah. The Democratic Party of Florida has been uh, a problem for a lot of years. I remember when yeah. I lived in Florida back in the in the mid 2000s, early 2000s and worked on races down there. It was the same thing. I mean, it was you could see Republicans laying the foundation and just that the Republican Party of Florida has has had their shit together for quite some time and it's bearing fruit now. Yep. Um, but you know that, I mean, Florida is not a surprise as much as we like Val Demings and think she'd be a spectacular Senator. It's, it's not going to be a surprise when Rubio wins and probably DeSantis is what's pulling Rubio over. Cause Absolutely. I don't know that Rubio is all that as popular as DeSantis is in Florida, frankly. And, and look, uh, here, here's the, the question that I, I, I asked someone earlier today. It's like, you, is it not supposed to be this way? Right. You outspend somebody, you have an, organiza an organization, you have a campaign, you do all the work, uh, you have unlimited money. Are you not supposed to be 25 points ahead? So, but I do think there are some surprises out there brewing in the, in the world. I am, uh, I am pretty optimistic right now um, as we sit. Sorry, I've got a visiting cat tonight and it's, oh. uh, it's, it's loud. Um, uh, I think we're seeing some surprises out of North Carolina right now, which is a state I've really got my eyes on at the moment because- oh. Quiet race, um, like we haven't really. Quiet, been, we, we, well, we, played we played a little bit. We played a little bit in in North Carolina. Some very quiet stuff, um, but that race right now, and again, it's still early in the evening. But you know, Beasley is at this moment. Uh, sorry, folks, you're gonna have to. You're gonna see me do my old guy look over the top of my glasses. <laughs> just, two, just pull them down like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> my God, my yeah. Jimmy. Jim. Um, <laughs> Uh, with about half the vote in, she is up at 54 to 44.5 percent, um, and she's winning. She's rolling up numbers in the big counties in North Carolina. That is it's a like race. Charlottesville. The, the only the, person who had that race on his list was Joe Trippy. Um, yes who will be with us in the next hour. Just so right. folks know who are joining us now, this is a special two-hour edition of The Breakdown. We will be on until 10 o'clock. Um, so we, we're going to have some folks in and out, like I said, of the of Lincoln Project principals yep. and uh, talking about races. And Joe Trippi will be joining us in the 9 o'clock hour. We can talk a little bit more with him about that. And, and the thing about North Carolina and some of these other places, it's like, you know, these are some of the races that we're watching that we didn't, 
necessarily talk about as much throughout the year, but that are emerging as interesting places. North Carolina, Utah, our good friend Evan Mullen giving Mike Lee a hell of a run for his money in Utah as an independent candidate. Um, Colorado is to, you know a tighter race than we thought in the Senate. Yep. Uh, over there. That could be an upset for Republicans, um, possibly, but we'll see if Michael Bennett holds on. Um, but right now, everyone, eyes are really on a couple of places. Now, I live in Northern Virginia, as I've mentioned, and there are some bellwether districts here in Northern Virginia that could give us an indication of kind of where this is going tonight, for the House at least. And, um, you know, you have Abigail Spanberger, who is a former CIA officer, uh, moderate Democrat, her district got redrawn, and she's yes. up against a MAGA crazy named Yelsey Vega, who is happens to be my county supervisor, actually. That, no, and those, um, that is that race is not going well so far from the early numbers for Spanberger, yes, and no. that would be a shame to lose her because she's one of those Democrats that gets it um, as far as governing the issues that are important. And um, yeah. but redistricting may, may have gotten her. And Virginia is one of those states that early returns the returns come in early because it closes at seven, and they're very good at reporting. Uh, watch her race. And then um, you have Loria, who uh, another one who with redistricting became more Republican in her district. She was a impeachment manager. She represents down there in the Norfolk area of, uh, of Virginia. She's probably going to lose also. It's a it's a tough race. And then you have Jennifer Wexton, who is my congresswoman against this other Trump crazy name, Hung Cow in the 10th district. So those are some some districts now in Virginia as as numbers are coming in because they the polls close at seven that I'm looking at right away. But, you know, Rick, it's like there are so many things and I and I want people not to get freaked out because right. there's you know, the, the horse race that the mainstream media does, this is what they do. This is part of the political media industrial complex where they have the special alerts. And, you know, my good friends over at CNN and MSNBC, they're on their boards and doing all this. And they're like, special report with 1% reporting. So-and-so is up. It's like, come on. <laughs> it's 1%. Right. It's not, why even bother? It's asinine. Until you start getting like over 50% reporting, they shouldn't report it at all. It gets everybody all freaked out. So um, we don't want to do that. We don't want to get people all freaked out. We just want to kind of talk through it. And we're all here going through this together and trying to bring some you know, some clarity and, and some calm to to the situation, because, um, you know, it may be it may turn out to be a tough night. You know, uh, on a lot of places, though, this year, you know, and, and you're going to have Trigby joining us shortly. And and Joe Jeff Trippy, Timmer or Jeff Timmer. Yeah, this hour. Um, and, and Philip. And then, Philip is, right. a, Philip's a, a fan favorite now. He, don't worry, folks. He's back by popular demand. Go ahead. <laughs> um, but we're going to walk through some of the some of the places that we put together as our list of states that were the most important in terms of protecting the American democracy in the 2024 yes. election cycle, That's right. which is why we invested so much of our time and energy in uh, Pennsylvania against Doug Mastriano. We looked at him as one of the most serious and important threats uh, because he is a guy who was at the 1-6 attack. He funded people to go to this terrorist attack. He has said he would um, re uh, undo the voting registration of everyone in Pennsylvania and start over. He said he would recertify Trump as mm -hmm. the 2020 winner. Mm -hmm. So he was an outlier at such a level that we felt that was one of our most important assignments this year. We're very confident that we've helped put Doug Mastriano in a pretty deep hole. And by doing so, much like DeSantis pulling Rubio over the line in Florida, we think crushing Mastriano turning him into this very, very repulsive figure to the Bannon line voters, especially mm -hmm. in the Philadelphia suburbs, yes. would have a corollary effect of helping John Fetterman, which we are guardedly optimistic. We're going to see some good results on that tonight. We don't know that yet, but we are very confident with Josh Shapiro. Um, so we're, yes. we're, we're waiting for those results to start uh, filling out a little bit more. And the, the, the more important thing about Pennsylvania and why that was one of the targeted targeted uh, states for our democracy deniers need to protect, protect democracy states is because Secretary of State is appointed by the governor there. They're right. not elected. So Mastriano would have had the opportunity as governor um, to appoint the Secretary of State who oversees elections. And he's told us what he would do. Rick, you just re reiterated some of that. And that's scary stuff. And you juxtapose that with what's happening out in Arizona, which we'll talk about in the second hour as well, 
with Carrie Lake and the slate of d democracy deniers in Arizona. Um, and we have a problem going into 2024. This is bigger than just tonight. And right. we've been trying to make that case. And, um, you know, I don't know if others have, have made that case enough. Uh, people are very in the moment at times, you know, gas prices are high. And so we don't care about 2024. Who cares? My, you know, it's inflation now. You know, these these are this is why we've we've put a focus on this for to explain to people why they need to care about these races collectively, because it's not just a one off. There is a movement in this country to undermine our democracy and our institutions that is very nefarious and gaining steam. So we need to that's why folks I hope everybody that we we talk to all the time got out there and voted and got folks out there to vote with them, because this is what we're up against. Um, let's bring in Philip. And let's see what uh, Philip Germain, he has been with us. We, he is our, our political um, statistician and putting in much hard work for us. And uh, we're glad to have you back, Philip. So as of right now, we are, Rick and I were talking about a couple of other states, but we really want to look at, uh, Pencil, let's start with Pennsylvania to pick up on that conversation. What sure. are we seeing right now? Because we know that areas like Philadelphia and the suburbs in Philly those are that's a key area as far as turnout for the Democrats and the and the Biden voters who the Republicans who went to Biden. Are they going to go and vote for Fetterman, let's say? Where, where are we at with that? Sure. So we've been monitoring, you know, Pennsylvania for about a week, a little over a week when it comes to the early vote, monitoring what's coming in, you know, in person, uh, early voting, absentee right. votes. Uh, what are these returns? And one of the things that we've been noting is that this is approaching 2018 turnout in Pennsylvania. This is approaching some, some pretty heavy turnout. And today, you know, what we saw leading up to, to this hour uh, in the in-person vote, uh, it's surpassing 2018, especially in right. Philadelphia County. So that's uh, good news. It is. It is. And I'm very curious to see, you know, what the, the margins end up being. But last I checked was, was we were over, I think, 500,000 combined votes in, in Philadelphia County. Yeah. Uh, and, and right now, I know we just, we have two counties. You have uh, Philadelphia County uh, coming in, and then you have one out near Pittsburgh coming in right now. Uh, fed, uh, heavy Fetterman at the moment, you know, 86 to 13 percent. You know, again, very early. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, we're going to see the, the red wave come in a little bit or the red mirage. Uh, because it's an election day and Republican turnout tends to be high on election day, according to the polls that we were monitoring and how people want to vote on election day, 54% of Republicans are planning to vote. So you're going to see those come in. I, I will say in, in, in the very, 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 very preliminary data we're seeing out of the area of the T and in Pittsburgh, yeah. um, you know, that, that is, that is probably going to end up being a good night. Uh, for Shapiro and Fetterman, uh, up in Warren County, way up in the T, you know, some very early results coming in from Warren, uh, with Fetterman leading at sixty-six to thirty point seven percent. I think that is, you know, that's a small sample, small county, but it's one of those counties I watch up in there in the northern border of Pennsylvania because it is, it, it's a fairly, it's a fairly blue-collar Democratic county. And for Oz to win, he's going to have to convert a lot of, which which Pennsylvania almost uniquely has, still a lot of blue collar Democrats, blue collar workers in most of the country have basically become functional or actual Republicans, mm -hmm. unlike in parts of uh, uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio. And Pennsylvania has a history of being a ticket splitting state. They're yes. not all states do this. Some states have a tendency they'll they'll just vote party line. That's it. They don't really ticket split. Um, like in, in Florida is an example of that. You, you're not going to see people voting for Ron DeSantis and then not voting for Marco Rubio. They're voting for Val Demings in a, in a situation like that. You're not going to see ticket splitting. Same thing in Arizona. I don't think if you're voting for Carrie Lake that you're going to vote for Blake Masters. I mean, you're going to vote for Mark Kelly. Um, right. But in Pennsylvania, a little bit different given the candidates um, they were presented with, where there were a lot of people who were uncomfortable with a carpetbagger, fraudster, TV doctor, celebrity guy like Dr. Oz, um, and this, those people, the Bannon line Republicans, I'm, I, you know, do they feel comfortable enough with Fetterman's ability to 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 be a senator to vote for him over Oz? That's what right. we're hoping for, you know. Mm -hmm. There, Philip, I want to know something about Philadelphia because I was listening to my good friend Michael Smirkanish this morning, who is from that area, 
and he knows all things Pennsylvania. And um, I forgot who he had on, but they were talking about how they think that some of the last minute crime ads and all of that stuff that they were running in those heavy uh, suburban districts in Philly may not have resonated as much because people in Philly were just over the moon over the World Series with the Phillies <laughs> and the Eagles being 8-0 ugh, as a Giants fan. Sorry, sorry, Philly, but ugh. anyway, but the people were distracted by that and that they were like, you know, we're we're not worrying about these negative campaign ads. We're, we're too busy celebrating our sports teams. And I get it. It's a heavy sports town. Um, and that the endorsement of, 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 of Fetterman by Oprah actually may have made a difference for some of those suburban women, given that Oprah's the one who made mm -hmm. Oz famous. Are we seeing any kind of different movement in those areas with those numbers at all? So, you know, things are still early, um, but I think you are noting that there, there are those voters that aren't as tuned in, right? Right. Uh, those that are watching every day and, 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 you know, paying attention to the small movements. And I, I agree as a Seahawks fan, you know, we're on the other side of the NFC, but I don't you, whooped our, you whooped our ass this, this year. It was the, the better team won. The better hey, team won. You know, I'm, I'm happy to see that, that somehow we're winning games, but you know, I'm I, fascinated I, by this sport ball discussion. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> it's not our fault. You guys have, you know, you don't have a real team over there in Tallahassee. Mm. Ooh, the Tampa uh, Bay. Who's your team? Tampa Bay. Bay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's a rough one. I'm sorry. You know, yeah. you know. I, I will say this. I will say this. I'm going to sort of throw this out there. This is what we call a blind item. <laughs> one of two people who is tangential or directly connected to. Actually, they're both directly connected to politics. Is the Yoko Ono of the Tom Brady marriage? Stop. Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Uh -huh. I don't even. I don't even. Let, let, let's let's put it out to our viewers. Who, who do you think it is, folks? Send it in, and if, if we have a good <laughs> couple of good ones, we'll we'll read it on air. That okay. is, Rick, you are just so crazy. But let let's let people guess. <laughs> let's let people yeah. guess. Bring it out, folks. <laughs> we'll play a different kind of Who's game. Who's the Yoko Ono that split up <laughs> Tom Brady's marriage? Mm -hmm. And I will tell you one clue. One clue. One of the candidates is blonde, and one of the candidates is brunette. Oh, that doesn't narrow there's it down. No gin, there's no gingers there's, in the mix. There's no Phillips represent. Phillips the only ginger in, that's, uh, right. that, that we have eyes for today. On and this, I would on never this. call <laughs> Philip a Yoko. He's much more of a Ringo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, uh, Philip, you know we just, we're, we just like giving you shit because you're younger than us and we can. That's okay. <laughs> My I'll, God, I'll... you youngsters don't have any respect. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, um, but yes. So as you were saying about those, yes. the, the voters in in the, those suburban areas and like Delaware County and stuff around mm -hmm. Philadelphia, that we were starting to see, um, you know, the the well, it's what's interesting to me too is that, and Rick, you know this, that mail in voting used to be a Republican thing. Like oh this yeah. Whole, like, I mean, Karl Rove made his whole career off of being a master at at mobilizing mail in ballots and voters like that was his like his specialty area and now it's completely flipped on its head and more democrats mail in voting versus republicans because now all of a sudden that's a bad thing same thing with ballot drop boxes by the way drop boxes were supposed to be about election integrity right philip and now drop boxes are you know some kind of conspiracy theory vessel well, Tara, it, it, I mean, it's biting them in the ass because you're seeing Trump cutting these videos, right? Saying stay in line or staying online because you can't complete a <laughs> sentence. But he's saying <laughs> stay in line because they put all of their eggs in this basket of their voters turning out on Election Day where they have no room for error. They have mm -hmm. to have every voter turn out. And we'll talk about it later. But you see these Nevada and Arizona where, you know, weather could impact the turnout in some of those rural counties. But mm -hmm. back to Pennsylvania, to, to answer your question, you know, these... Um, Voters that aren't paying attention, I, I think this Oprah endorsement, something that, you know, it, it's insane we're talking about Dr. Oz running for Senate to begin with, but I now know. Oprah Winfrey being an impactful endorsement uh, is crazy, but you are going to see, you know, the wall-to-wall -wall coverage, uh, that, those are the reports I've been watching, our wall-to-wall -wall coverage in Pennsylvania of Oprah Winfrey endorsing Dr. Mm -hmm. John Fetterman, and the turnout that we're seeing across these counties, from Allegheny to uh, Philadelphia County, Right. You're, you're seeing a high turnout that's almost surpassing 2018, as we've seen in Philadelphia County. 
Uh, and those are big dem strongholds that Fetterman needed to turn out because mm -hmm. it's, it's no mistake. He's got to underperform Shapiro, right? right. People that vote for Shapiro, but vote for Oz. We've seen a number of those, uh, you know, videos and uh, interviews of, of voters. Uh, so he needs strong dem turnout to get him over. And, you know, we're not in the business of making predictions, but these are really good initial numbers to see. Mm hmm. Um, speaking of, we can't believe we're talking about these people as potential se next senators, Georgia. There's been so much talk about this and, um, you know, Herschel Walker so far from what we've seen it is underperforming Brian Kemp in the areas in outside Atlanta where he needs to pick up those votes. I mean, this is so razor thin and you have a libertarian candidate over there. The freaking libertarians are the spoilers again with this shit um, that could be, you know, t siphoning off one or two percentage points, which could be the difference between an outright 50% versus a, a runoff. Cause Georgia, you have to get over 50% or else you end up in a runoff. So what are we, what are we seeing right now? That's what I saw earlier was that Herschel Walker was underperforming Brian Kemp in those areas out, you know, in Atlanta, in the, the mm -hmm. Atlanta suburbs. Rick has a term for that area because you're from not far from there. The donut. The donut. That's it. Um, yep. What are we seeing about about that? Or what should people be looking for as they're watching kind of the horse race stuff? Sure. So again, you know, these are all early numbers. We're seeing, uh, as you will see in a lot of these states, uh, Democratic heavy areas tend to report first, especially, you know, Georgia and North Carolina. Those are states where you're going to see heavy Dem members coming in. Um, but what you are seeing, and this is a trend we're even noting in North Carolina a little bit, but in, in Georgia right now, you have Warnock slightly overperforming Biden. And that's really important. And I've been yes. writing this down, you know, in Gwinnett County and Fulton County, he is overperforming Biden by, you know, percent to a little over 1%. And then on the other end of that, that's good seeing, news, folks. That's it, good it, news. It, it, it's good news so far. And I hope it holds up. Uh, one of the other things we are noting uh, and this is the dynamic, is Walker's underperforming Trump. Very slightly, but, and again, uh, early, interesting. But we're seeing Walker right. underperforming Trump across the state. Well, that's important too, because let's not forget, Biden only won Georgia by less than 12,000 votes. So all you need, I mean, those, those tenths of percentage points matter in races mm -hmm. this close like that, particularly in places like Georgia. So, well, that's some good news. Is there a particular county or area that when people are watching John King or Kornacki, whatever channel they're watching later after they're done watching us, that they should go, uh-oh, or yay, if they see that certain numbers are certain places? You know, I would say, you know, you want to watch them run up the numbers in, in Fulton. You want to watch Cobb. You want to watch uh, DeKalb County. You want to see all those coming in heavy down. The double uh, but, counties. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to see the, the Atlanta area coming in pretty heavy. Okay. All right. Um, before we bring in Jeff Timmer and uh, Trigby to talk one more thing, one thing about Georgia. One yeah. more thing about Georgia. Um, so Stacey Abrams seems to be underperforming yeah. uh, Warnock by what, about uh, eight points from what I can see? About, okay. Yeah, 8.7%. 8, 8. She seems okay. to be relatively underperforming Warnock. I yeah, I am, uh, I, I'm not really shocked. Me but, either. We but, saw this coming along. Right? Yeah, that was, that was an ago. overpriced stock, folks. It was. And, and, you know, kudos to her for her organizing prowess and what she's been able to accomplish in that, in that arena. Um, but the matchup for governor was just, it, it was, it was a tough uphill battle for her. And given that it yeah. is a, it is, you know, more of a red state than, than not. Um, Brian Kemp has been a, a pretty popular governor there. And even he's even performing well with black voters, black, black and brown voters overperforming more than people would expect because of some of the things that he's done. He's done smart politicking in Georgia. Like I was on when I was on Comedy Central on the Charlemagne show, hell of a week. Killer Mike, the rapper. Yeah, he lives I know, in, Mike. Right. Uh, yeah. He lives in Atlanta. You know, he's he's a big socially conscious guy. He's, you know, very involved in politics. He was all about Brian Kemp. And it was a shock to the audience oh. because people, yeah, he was very like he he didn't outright come out and say he was going to vote for Brian Kemp, but he was very complimentary of things that Brian Kemp has done in the black community, organizations that he's worked with, and said that you know he it was pretty implicit that he was not thrilled with how Stacey Abrams ran her campaign, and that told me that if Killer Mike is on a black show like that, <laughs> pretty progressive and unafraid to say like, hey, you know, Brian Kemp did this, 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 and this, and this, 
I can't blame a percentage of black folks that want to vote for him. You have to vote for the people who are in your area. And I thought that was very illuminating. At that point, I knew that Stacey Abrams would probably lose. So, And, and Tara, on that, I, I think one thing to note is that when you had Kemp and Raffensperger get through and beat their MAGA opponents in the primary, I right. think a lot of people let up on the gas and, and started hitting the brakes. And, and you know, Walker is MAGA incarnate, you know, <laughs> all from the news stories about him to the scandals, you know, so I think voters might have, have focused a little more on that, that race. Right. That's exactly right. And so Georgia's, and, and then with the changes in the Georgia voting laws, you know, obviously that's not something that we were thrilled about and it could have been very problematic, but it seems to be working out well thus far. Um, and that's, that's a testament to Democrats and organizers on the ground adjusting to you know, the, the impediments that were potentially in place. So record, record turnout. That's a good thing. We like to hear that. So we'll keep an eye on Georgia. Philip, thank you. You will be back later in the next hour to give us some more updates. We appreciate you. We'll see you soon. See you soon. <laughs> Rick. Before... Sorry guys. I'm trying to run numbers while we're doing this. I know, but you, you, this, here's the good news though. You don't have to do it by yourself. Because we have Philip to do it for us, and we have the I political know. team. They're going to feed us the numbers. We just got since we since we've been on air. Jennifer Wexton here in Virginia Ten, where I live, um, she has been projected the winner against that fucker hung cow. Who I'm so glad because he was a MAGA guy, and he talked. He wanted to, to free the the freaking January sixth uh, uh, insurrectionist. He was not a great guy. So glad to see that she's won. Still waiting on the Spanberger and Laria numbers, which are are a little bit more bit more precarious. But um, before we bring in Trigvi and um, and Timmer, I think we should run one of our ads from, um, let's, what, which, which one do we want to do first, since we're going to talk Michigan and Wisconsin? Um, let's do, uh, let's do the, uh, the Michigan um, Michaels ad. Or the, the, uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin Michaels Act. Yes. Yeah. Let's run that since uh, there's a lot on the line in Wisconsin, too. We've got some uh, some MAGA guys out there that are bad news that we've been fighting against. So let's run it. 1849, Wisconsin. Only white men could vote. Abortions were illegal, even for rape or incest. A lot has changed since 1849. But Tim Michaels says, My position is an exact mirror of the 1849 law. Once Roe v. Wade protected women from extremists like Tim Michaels. But now, if Tim Michaels is governor, he can take Wisconsin back to 1849. Michaels is a radical out of step with Wisconsin. He still claims Donald Trump won Wisconsin and should be president. We should not even be having this conversation 21 months after the election. If he's governor, he'll bring Trump chaos to Wisconsin. The 2024 election will be a nightmare. Four years of radical rule. We are going to take this country back! Does that sound like the Wisconsin we love? The Lincoln Project paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Uh, 1849, Rick? In 1849... Not a, good, not a great year for, for a lot of people. No, you and I, I would not be allowed to sit here right. with you in the same uh, environment at all. And... <laughs> Um, frankly, given I'm biracial, somebody would probably be dead as a result of me being in existence in 1849. Um, I, I wouldn't have come about because of a happily married couple. <laughs> okay. So yeah. 1849 was not a great time pre-Civil War in this country. And anyone who says they, they want to go back to the, that, those times, um, raise a little bit of a red flag for me. What do you think? Kind of. Little. Kinda, just a just a little bit, just a little bit. Good lord! Oh, Rubio declared winner in Florida. Yeah, not a surprise, but ugh. By the way, in my Twitter feed right now, which I really don't have time to manage at the moment, folks. <laughs> y'all, I, I know, I know that y'all are trying to troll me. All you Florida Republicans, like, you guys spend so much time on. We barely fucking touched DeSantis. It was like the lightest fucking love tap. And you know why we did it, you morons, you idiot mooks. We did it to continue the Trump-DeSantis war because we knew all along DeSantis would beat Charlie Crist. We're priming the pump so that they'll have a bloody, brutal, horrible conflict. And if you've watched what Donald Trump's been doing to DeSantis the last few days, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. It's starting already. Speaking of that, um, before we bring- Way ahead in, of y'all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bloomberg, 
New York Times already reporting Trump threatening to unleash all kinds of gossip and, and, and bones in the closet of DeSantis uh, if he decides to run against him. It's, star it's, it's already been in the works, folks, for months, for months, the internecine warfare. I've, we've been saying it. We've been playing around with it. We know. We already know. We've, and been, it's building this, we've been building this machine to mm -hmm. make them have a giant battle to mm -hmm. weaken their ticket. Yep. That's exactly right. And, and I, it just, it amazes me that, that, that <laughs> Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump are these, are these unbelievably perfect players in this drama because Ron DeSantis has a brain, but no charisma. Trump has charisma, but no brain. <laughs> and watching Trump do what he's doing is already offending what I call the cruise ship Republicans and the gentry conservatives who are like, yep. DeSantis is the future of the Republican Party. Why, he's yeah. Trump without any of the problems. He's going to be a smear on the road. He's going to be a greasy piece of roadkill pecked by buzzards when Trump <laughs> is done with him. Good God. Yeah, that's right. They, they have no idea what, what's coming for them. Uh, Trump called him Ron DeSanctimonious. I called him Ron Delusional on Sunday on MSNBC. I call him Tater. Yeah, I know. You call him Tater, which is very on brand for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's bring in Trig V. Olson and Jeff Timmer, our political gurus on the Gentlemen. ground out there. Trig V does, if you guys have uh, never seen Trig V do his, uh, uh, what is it, the seven rules of of um, dealing with autocrats yeah. dealing with autocrats that's right um you, he posted all the time it's fantastic it's really great and jeff is the former uh party chair out there in michigan back when republicans were sane and um we we love having you guys on our team as advisors on stuff and uh since we started talking about wisconsin i'm going to go to you first trigby because you have been on the ground out there in Wisconsin with this Johnson um, Mandela Barnes fight. We've got the, the governor's race with Evers. And then we've got this other crazy 1849. He wants to turn the clock back. Talk to us about Wisconsin. What's going on there? So, you know, Timmer and I were just both on the ground in the last, I don't know, a week ago, I think today we were on the ground. Um, so, you know, at the start of this thing, we identified three existential threats to democracy in terms of elections. Pennsylvania governor's race, Michigan's governor's race, and Wisconsin governor's race. Wisconsin's governor's race is on a knife's edge. Uh, it's gonna be really close, um, but there's some positive signs tonight on that. And, you know, we've been saying for eight months, um, if, if Democrats, if Shapiro, Whitmer, and Evers win, democracy has had a good night because we'll be able to have an election in 2024 in which those three states, they're going to, we, we've got governors who are going to honor the results. So, mm -hmm, you know, it's mm -hmm. going to be really close. Um, the Senate race, quite frankly, and, and I, the other thing I'd say is what people don't see about the Lincoln Project, you know, while we were running some ads against DeSantis and all these, these nut heads were attacking us, what you didn't see is the million dollars that we dropped in Wisconsin, <laughs> right. hammering a ban in line of 145,000 people over and look over, over here, Marcus. Look over, over here. again. Mm -hmm. It's like, here's the shiny object, boys. And I'll tell you what, there's a little bit of a surprise going on in North Carolina. And I think you're all going to hear a little bit about what we were doing there. Even if it doesn't work out, <laughs> Man, it, there's, uh, even if there's a similar doesn't... game going on that people don't see. Mm -hmm. yep. even, That's if right. don't land, even if North Carolina doesn't land, you know, folks, there's something, there's a secret about the Lincoln Project. We've said it, we, it's not really a secret. We said it publicly, but people cannot get it out of their heads. We are an iceberg. On the tip of the iceberg, you see the cool viral ads. And you think that's all we do. Mm -hmm. But we are crafty motherfuckers. And we got a lot going on <laughs> underneath the waterline. And we had a very, very, uh, I think, cool strategy in North Carolina. We did not, it was not a giant money strategy, but it was a very smart and targeted strategy. We're going to see if it works out tonight. It's not all our doing, but we're going to be, we're, we're proud we were in that part of the fight. And we definitely, as I said earlier, you know, we applied this under the iceberg strategy in places like Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, because we, as Trigg says, those are the threat to democracy states. If you were a student at the University of Wisconsin, Madison, or any of the university campuses, you go on Twitter and look at what's happened at the University of Wisconsin, Eau Claire. The last week of the campaign, you were seeing the Leslie Jones spot. 
Mm -hmm. on average, five times per day. You were getting the choice presented to you of, of Tim Michaels and Republicans who want to overturn their right to choice in the state of Wisconsin or go back to 1847 or whatever it was. 49. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, 1849. Same I difference. It was, I guess it was the year Wisconsin was became statehood. Yeah, and you were getting, you were hearing, seeing those messages over and over again. If you were right. a Republican living along the Mississippi River and then going across from the Twin Cities to Green Bay, you were seeing multiple times Tim Michaels say Republicans will never lose another election, and then you were hearing from Adam Kinzinger. And Liz Cheney talking about why you can't elect election deniers. Mm -hmm. You know, they, well, they're busy looking at our head fake with a couple of ads getting into Ron DeSantis's cage like he's Donald Trump sitting at Mar-a-Lago <laughs> with a whispers ad coming at him. We were whacking them from the other side. And I'll tell you, one of the things we bring to the table, you know, I come out of a world that's that's the McConnell SLF world. We would do that to Democrats every time. It's pretty funny to watch us doing it to MAGA because, and that's exactly what we did. Now, Timmer, on the other hand, in Michigan, they just steamrolled, steamrolled Tudor Dixon like no business. But. <laughs> so, speaking of that, Jeff, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's well, you know the. The rest of the countries, there's there's some iffy races, uh, but I think overall democracy is going to have a good night um, in Pennsylvania, in Michigan. Um, Gretchen Whitmer is going to going to win re-election, and all the rhetoric that the Republicans have been putting out, that some of the reports have been putting out about a closing race, are just bullshit. <laughs> it's just never been close. Um, Whitmer's going to end up. Uh, winning this thing by a margin like she did in 2018, which is, uh, you know, roughly double digits. I mean, she could get into a double digit win. Um, but more importantly, even for democracy, uh, two of the uh, largest, free you, Rick was talking about freaks and mooks earlier. <laughs> two of the, the biggest freaks and mooks are running for Secretary of State and Attorney General in Michigan. I mean, the guy Ooh. who's running for Attorney General yeah. who's going to lose badly tonight. Um, is what's been reported as a nail biter. Oh, it could be the upset of the night. The guy's going to lose badly. Uh, then he's going to lose his law license and he's going to lose his freedom and go to prison. I mean, this guy's going to be brought up on charge. He's, he's under investigation, criminal investigation, dealing with election fraud going back to 2020. Um, right. That's right. I forgot all about that yeah. guy in Michigan. This is going to be, yeah. Because there's just so be, many of them, Jeff. There's so yeah, many it's of be a big these in, 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 in Michigan. And, uh, you know, the Trigby was talking about the, the feel on the ground and, and really talking to people who know Wisconsin and uh, it's going to be a, a very close race, but it really looks like, you know, so there's some, there's some very good signs about uh, uh, Tony Evers race there. I know a lot of people are focused on the results of the U S Senate, but in terms of the, the, uh, <laughs> I guess solidifying the foundation of democracy. Uh, Tony the Evers matters, is more important. and 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 Ron Johnson is going to be Ron Johnson, and he, whether yeah. he's in the Senate or not, it doesn't it, it doesn't have the same impact on on the future of democracy, and that's what we need to be focused on. People are still going to talk about oh DeSantis and Greg Abbott and uh, all the you know oh I saw earlier Marjorie Taylor Green won. Rand Paul won re-election. It's like no shit, you know. Right. It's, like, <laughs> you know it's, it's great that people were excited and ran a full court press and trying to win these races and sucking up resources into these these races. That's how you build. Uh, 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 I guess pro democracy coalition in the long run. It doesn't happen overnight. You got to go out and fight in all the territory. But let's be real about where the the um, the, the races that matter tonight are going to go pretty well. Those the um, the three Great Lakes states that are most existential to democracy, Nevada and Arizona, are going to be uh, you know they're right behind those governors' races. There are going to be very close, and uh, it's going to be really interesting to watch what happens. And watching the rhetoric come out, it's going to be really interesting to see Carrie Lake is already out she's doing the trump she's They're already claiming right. well, they, she's, it was stolen. she's well, been doing yeah, the trump. Lake, right. lake masters and the rnc apparently have got lawsuits right now trying to keep the polls open another three hours um because they had Maricopa. some in right, Maricopa. Maricopa. But I was told that if you tried to keep the polls open, you were right. engaged in voter fraud. I was told that. I heard right. that. Right. Except when it's in a county that you need because it has yeah, the, the you know, most of the votes. And right. they did have a couple of. So this is what happened in Arizona. 
So in Arizona and Maricopa, they had some trouble with the tabulation machines and like something like 20 percent uh, was the number that was out there. So what happened is that they have a contingency plan, which is what you're supposed to do. If one thing doesn't work, you have a plan B and a C and a D. So their plan B is they take your ballot, they put it in like a secure box and then they take it to another location where it's right. counted. So they so Carrie Lake went out there and put and and Charlie Kirk and the rest of these assholes put out this disinformation about that something was up and your vote's not going to get counted and, and blah 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 trying to stir the pot. Now what people need to understand about Maricopa County, the elections are run by Republicans. They have a Republican uh, supervisor of elections and a Republican somebody else that does uh, out there. So they're run, it's run by Republicans. So they're not, there's no conspiracy here, but they're trying to gin it up anyway. And, you know, that's what Carrie Lake does. So she's going to accept the results if she wins. But if she loses, then there's some kind of shenanigans. It's just so duplicitous. Um, before we go, continue talking about this, Trigvi, you brought up the Leslie Jones ad. And I think we should run it and remind people this was a fantastic ad that LP put out in collaboration with the great, hilarious Leslie Jones about voter intimidation and standing up to it. Let's roll it. The Republicans are telling us exactly what they would do on Election Day. It's the same story as 2020. Claim victory before every vote is even counted. Say they won, that the election is over, that we should stop the count. Teams of Republican lawyers would try to strike down the ballots of millions of American voters, especially African Americans. Fake claims of voter fraud, intimidation, and even violence at polling places and drop boxes. Republicans aren't willing to lose, even when they do. But there's no voice louder than your vote. Don't be intimidated. That's right, that's your vote. That's not their vote. Don't let nobody walk up to you and tell you that you can't vote. Cash your absentee ballot and check it. If you vote on election day, stay in line, get it done. They're counting on you to be scared, intimidated, afraid, which you shouldn't be. You really should not be. Nobody should be walking up to you while you're trying to vote. That's your vote. Make your voice heard, prove them wrong. Don't just tell them no, tell them hell no. Hell no, H-E double hockey sticks, N-O, no. And this message has been approved by Leslie Jones. <laughs> I, love, I love it. Hell no, that's- She's so great. She's so good. And um, yeah, I mean, I saw, so today, of course, Tiki, had a, on his on his Instagram told everyone to go out there and vote because since he can't vote he you know he's he's still put, doing his part to spread the word and there was a nice little song jazz song about voting that um, accompanied his little message and it said your vote is your voice and I thought that that was really poignant because that's exactly what that is and it made me think of Leslie Jones's voice saying hell no to these people who are out here trying to intimidate folks from voting. No, you never let, I, all, I always say, never be bullied into silence. And that's exactly what the MAGA Republicans are trying to do to so many people. They're trying to bully folks into not voting, intimidating them and bullying them into silence. The Marjorie Taylor Greens and the rest of them. And we say, hell no. That's what the Lincoln Project does. And I think that we should think about doing some merch that says hell no and, and Lincoln Project on it because uh, I think that's great branding for us. It's on brand for, for yeah. what we do here. Well, so let's fuck around and find out. We That's exactly that. right. We I already know. have that one, Timmer. Get on and buy it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. LincolnProject.us. Um, Jeff, I, one other question I wanted to ask you about what's happening in, in Michigan. And in Michigan being one of those places where we saw the political violence and what mm -hmm. could potentially happen early on um, with the uh, with the threats to Gretchen, Whit Gretchen Whitmer. Um, and those bastards have been now convicted, thankfully. Um, but what were there? I saw there were some shenanigans also uh, trying to, to in, in De, well, they were trying to say there were shenanigans in Detroit. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what was going on there with that? No surprise. The black city is where they're trying to claim there was some kind of fraud or shenanigans going on. But what 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 is happening in, in Detroit? What, were the, what was going on there? Well, one of the things that the Republicans have done in Michigan, and I know they've done this elsewhere, but it's been uh, reported and was kind of caught on secret 
camera in, in Michigan is they're training uh, people who are official election inspectors, you know, they're the, uh, the, the in sitting in the precinct rooms where they're counting votes, uh, absentee ballots in places like Detroit. Um, if uh, the, the clerk has to bring in equal numbers of Republicans and Democrats, so the Republicans made sure to have a lot of their uh, radical, most uh, extreme members trained, and they train them to go in and break the law and to kind of throw a wrench in the gears of democracy to break things and just right. play play fuck around. And that's what they've been doing. Uh, they've been trying to uh, 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 disrupt, uh, lodge challenges that are baseless, um, re- send out anecdotal reports that are uh, indicating that there are things that are wrong that aren't. These are just people who have either no idea what they're looking at or are intentionally lying to the outside world, trying to stoke the, the notion that there's something going on. And it's mm-hmm. all part of the plan. Trump's been on Truth Social talking about absentee problems in Detroit. Oh, my God. You know, and Is it's, that where he said pro? Protest? Is that where he said where he put out that that truth social nonsense where he was like, oh, there's no, you know, protest, protest, protest. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to see we're going to see more of that as the night goes on. It's it's not just going to be this kind of, you know, let's have a bunch of beers and decide to overthrow the country like we saw in 2020. <laughs> it's going to be much more deliberate script where you're going to hear uh, people in, in Detroit, even though Gretchen Whitmer is going to win by 300,000 votes or more in in Michigan tonight. They're going to that's not going to stop them from saying it's being stolen. And you're going to see these scenes from outside the counting room in, in, in Detroit where counting will continue into more because by law they can't process those votes until you know 47 minutes ago they had right. they couldn't even start until eight o'clock right and so it's right. going to take all night to process you know over a hundred thousand votes by hand uh, and check those signatures and do all those things that people will claim aren't being done that are being done um and, and we're going to see that in you know arizona or wisconsin or anywhere else it doesn't matter how big the margin of victory is it's going to be much more scripted and it's going to be brought to you know a, a town near you where they're stealing the vote in harrisburg or in madison or in carson city or in phoenix that's right um, that's what we're going to be seeing all night long is is a, a much more scripted outrage machine and look i i think that the republicans um the, the reality of what they expect tonight doesn't match the bravado of the rhetoric over the last couple of weeks. The rhetoric is designed to feed the, uh, to fuel the rubes. It's red meat for the rubes about how it was stolen. Mm-hmm. When, w- if, and when the, the Democrats hold on to the U S Senate, it's going to be, Oh my God, it was stolen from us. Oh, that's when, right. when Gretchen Whitmer and Tim Michaels or Steve Sisolak, if they win reelection, it's going to be because it was stolen. And it, 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 that's what this is all about. It's all about 2024. And, it, you know, while some of these elections are still being uh, decided, maybe some of them will be recountable. Trump's going to announce for reelection. It's going to all be about stolen election, grievance, mm-hmm. grievance, grievance. This is the script, and this is what we're in for every single goddamn day until November of 2024. Jeff, you just hit the nail on the head with that. And Trigvi, I know that, like, were you, we were all watching collectively. We were gluttons for punishment last night watching the Ohio rally with Trump Mm -hmm. and to see what he was going to say. And I admittedly, I have to say, I haven't suffered through a Trump rally in two years because I can't take it anymore. And I just thought to myself, are we serious? This guy is, he he sounds insane that this is even still a thing, but it is. And the Republican Party has become that and embraced it, has not repudiated it. And this this whole line of, to to Timmer's point, of of a collective, it was stolen. This is part of the authoritarian playbook, no? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I was listening to Trump and I mean, Hugo Chavez or Alexander Lukashenko, they got, he's got, you know, he gives them a run for their money, right? With the amount of crazy. And then there's the whole, you know, I'm going to try and figure out how to lock up leakers in the press and everybody else. Right. Reported today, just for people, for tricky, for people who don't know what you're referring to, it was reported today in a story in Rolling Stone that Trump has been trying to figure out ways that if he wins the White House again, how he can jail reporters jail journalists that write stories that he doesn't like. But let's make sure to keep writing stories with the both sidesism inflecting everything. Republicans say and Democrats say as if they're the same equivalents on different sides of the equation. They're not anymore. One's an autocratic 
force and one eight. That's right. But Tomorrow also, when we're doing that, we're going to have conversations about that. The malpractice of the media with the both sides of them, yeah. because it's that's part of why these people are even viable. Sorry, go ahead. Drew, go ahead. No, no. I, what I was going to say is he's stoking violence. And, you know, to Timmer's point, one of the things that Jeff and I were talking a lot about when we were out in Wisconsin is this. Right. Gretchen Whitmer is going to blow the wheels off of off of Dixon, like I said, and and, and Democrats are going to win in Michigan in large part because Gretchen Whitmer, quite frankly, ran the kind of campaign that Democrats around the country should have been running. Okay? Give an example. He, Give an example. So people know well, what I did mean, she do? Right. She for she stood firm on her core principles. But then she spent a good chunk of not just the campaign, but her time in office reaching out to Republicans. Half or more of the business community that typically leans Republican in Michigan was with Gretchen Whitmer. She did exactly what Tommy Thompson and and John Engler and Tom Ridge, you know, were doing back in the 90s, early 90s, when old guys, not you, Tara, but Rick and Tim. <laughs> oh, no. And I were me working too. For him, right? oh, okay. me too. I'm 47. But, but, so, yes. Right. You're still a kid. So You're it still was, a kid. I know it was, I don't look it, but thank you. <laughs> but here's, here's the danger, right? We've gotten to a point where if if that race, the governor's race or the Ron Johnson race or both of them is in recount territory and Michigan isn't, the crazy will travel. I mean, oh, we yeah. saw that with Justin <laughs> like Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse. And here's yeah, the thing, yeah. like, you, we, you know, I mean, when you got when you got these guys trying to get on planes from Florida with, you know, nine millimeters inside a chicken. Right. Like crazy. <laughs> hey, is now, gonna listen, travel I'm going to tell these you, places. Uh, if you're going to travel with that. It keeps the gun well lubricated. <laughs> yeah, but like keeps, cord with salmonella isn't the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the Don't guy probably I'm tried gonna... to cook the chicken for lunch. I mean, once he got... I mean, you make it a little sticky with the with the you know the trigger pull there. But oh. seriously, like the crazy oh. is going to show up in other places, and I will tell you, in the coming days particularly if Kerry Lake loses. I've been texting back and forth with a pretty prominent journalist who's on the ground there. In and, Arizona? And, yeah, in Arizona. And the, they, they, we keep going back and forth, which is more likely to be the spark that sets off the, the house of dynamite. Is it if Kerry Lake loses, that may very well set it off, right? But it's also possible a split decision can set it off. It's a powder keg waiting to go off. And there will be people traveling from all over who want to get in the middle of that from MAGA in large part because Donald Trump is going and giving the kinds of speeches he's giving. And people who are supposed to be sane Republicans like Mike DeWine are getting on the stage with them. Did you believe what that? What the Did fuck you see... was that little leprechaun doing on the stage last Unbelievable. night? Unbelievable. First of all, you could barely see him. And listen, and I can tell all... you guys, I can tell you from personal knowledge, Mike DeWine hates Donald Trump yes. with the fire of a billion suns. Yes thought he was the most destructive, corrosive, evil was a word I heard from his mouth about mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Correct. And yet there he is on the stage thing. like, may I kiss the hem of your robe, sir? I couldn't believe it. And, and he got booed, by the way. And anybody who was watching, when, De when DeWine got up on the stage, he got booed because the, the MAGAs there knew that he wasn't a MAGA guy. So it just makes them look like such jackasses, such weaklings when they do this. It's, and we're supposed to have confidence in any of the adult in the room Republicans, the good ones. Don't you know? There's the good. There are no more good Republicans. They don't exist anymore. All of their balls have been collectively cut off by Donald Trump, and he's playing with them in a jar in Mar-a-Lago for dessert. So it's disgusting, but it's true. <laughs> and I don't want to ever see that visual again. I'm sorry I put it in people's well, minds. Yeah, that was a lot, Tara. Yeah. Well, well I was listening to talking to a lies. bunch of men, but I knew you guys would get it. <laughs> Trigby, Trigby nailed this when you talked about the, you know, there's, there are people who are, and there's a, there's a, a weaponized wing of the Republican party and outrage machine who are looking to cause trouble. They're literally they're actors who are deliberately yes. going to be looking for a fight. Uh, but what's even more dangerous is the, the outside actors. And this gets into Trigby's wheelhouse here is the outside actors, uh, Russia, China. I mean, there are people who are looking to to foment the discord here out people who who are enemies of the united yeah. states even as much or more so than than the magas have become and so we have to watch for information uh watch for uh, uh misinformation and people trying to provoke that spark that's going to set things off here. I mean, we, the conditions are dry. You know, if you're driving by the, the state park, Smokey says fire conditions 
high yes. today. Yes. Um, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's something we need to be careful of because this, how we react to this says a lot about who we are not who they are. And so, you know, there, we, we can't meet the violence with violence. We've got to avoid being the ones to uh, stand there and, and start poking somebody in the chest. If you're confronting them outside a, a yeah. counting room, um, yeah. don't, don't do it. Uh, we've got to establish the foundations and, and restore faith in, in democracy. 100%. You know why? Because our enemies abroad are watching to your right. point. And I, I do, I, mean, I do. I want to echo that one more time. Yes. You know, Folks, I, I think we I think we probably agree. If there's a powder keg tonight in the country, it's probably Arizona. Um, it's so close. Mm -hmm. It is very uh, Carrie Lake is doing everything she can to stir it up. For anybody that's helping with our union efforts out there, we have a great team on the ground in Arizona doing the work right now to anybody who, who can spread this message. If the MAGA start to show up with guns and and they start to do the things that they've been threatening to do deconflict, call law enforcement, get, let us know. We've got lawyers, we've got people. Um, this is going to be, I think, the state where, where we need to have cooler heads prevail. Do not let these crazy people provoke you into doing something that they want, which is an opportunity to kill people. And that's, and I'm not putting too fine a point on it, folks. No, you're right about that. Uh, there's, and Jack, there's been... Jackie Westerman from our organization out there. She's our lead organizer for the union is, is, She's absolutely. going to be joining us. She's going yeah, to be joining she's, us in the she's nine o'clock hour. Fantastic. In, she's in going to talk minutes. more about Arizona here shortly. Yep, yep. yep. She's um, an ass kicker. Yeah, she is an ass kicker. That, that's right. <laughs> and, people need, and people need to see because they've heard about us talk absolutely. about the union and 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 all the grassroots organizing that's been going on. Another aspect of the Lincoln Project that some folks don't necessarily associate with us, but we do more than just make ads around here. So we're gonna, we're going to have Jacqueline on. In a, in a little bit to talk about some of the grassroots boots on the ground stuff that they've been doing. They've been kicking kicking ass and uh, carrying on. I, I like my mug here, my breakdown mug, kick ass and carry on. That's what they've been doing. Um, I want to make a point about the, that Jeff, you were talking about that our, you know, our foreign adversaries are, are also getting involved. They see an opportunity here. I mean, it was just reported in the last day or two that uh, one of the Russian oligarchs out there that's part of, of Putin's inner circle he admitted that they were meddling in our elections. Now, our intelligence agencies have known this. It's not really a, uh, it's not news necessarily. But what is news that they, is that they're becoming arrogant and emboldened about it, bragging about it. Mm -hmm. Right, Trigvi? So you, I mean, you know this. Yeah, You've been so, over in Europe. I mean, you understand all those. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I was cited by Nikolai Patrushev for sowing discord across their near abroad. It, it isn't just an oligarch, Tara. It's, it's Pergozin. Right. I mean, this guy literally right. is the caterer to Putin. Caterer. That's he right. Runs, caterer. He runs a paramilitary operation. Like this, <laughs> this, 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 this would be like Jared Kushner suggesting that, you know, in the Trump vertical. Mm -hmm. um, there, but to some degree, honestly, you know, having spent part of my life dealing with it, you know, there's a little bit of this is just Tom fuckery on their part, right? Like they're throwing <laughs> that out there. Yeah, they're, they're mm -hmm. screwing around in our elections, no doubt. But they're just trying to egg on uh, uncertainty and and it's and all, part of, remember, all part, well, of yeah, part of the psyops all part of yeah it's all part of the psyops and and you have to remember vladimir putin's narrative which the chinese have picked up on since about yep. 2006 has been democracy equals chaos and they have stayed on that message and that is what they've tried to sow across europe which is something that i was working to counter um, and that's what they have sewed into our own process and they're amplifying it. Now they have other people who've figured out this is a pretty good deal. So, I mean, I don't think we want to over explode about it because what they're trying to do is, is to create a bait for the left to take and basically say, well, the Russians are on the Republican side. So any election they win, it must've been the Russians that did, and, you know, it's kind of a win-win for them. But that said, um, you know, the best way to stick it to Bergozin and Putin and the rest of them who are, you know, fucking around in our elections is to make sure they get their asses kicked in Ukraine. And yes. the best way to ensure that they get their asses kicked in Ukraine is making sure that there's a majority of people, Republicans and Democrats, who support aid to Ukraine and getting the Ukrainians what they need to kick the shit out of them. So and as we know, Republicans, uh, per Kevin McCarthy, 
have said that they take the house back over. Ukraine isn't guaranteed to get the funding that they needed. Correct. There's not going to be a blank check for Ukraine, which is just insane because it means that they, you know, we're not, well, they, they don't have the, the complete power to stop that, but, the, but they could make it more difficult. And that means that they're not pro-democracy. So it's on, on brand for them since they're not pro-democracy in America either now which is what the Republican Party has come to. And Ronald Reagan, who you have prominently featured in the back there, is spinning in his freaking grave now looking at what the Republican Party has done on foreign policy. And on that note, I think this would be a good time to say thank you to Jeff and Trigby. We appreciate you guys and everything you've done uh, on the ground there. And we're going to run one of Rick's favorite ads on Ukraine. Thanks, guys. Check Thanks. Out. When Vladimir Putin invaded a peaceful Ukraine... His brutal shock troops committed hideous war crimes against women, children, and the elderly. He bombed cities, towns, and villages. America and the world gave Ukraine weapons, supplies, and intelligence. The Ukrainians put their courageous soldiers in the line of fire. With great sacrifice, this alliance broke the invasion, pushed it back, liberated millions. Victory for Ukraine is in sight, but the war isn't over. And the new front is in Washington, where mega-Republicans want a Putin victory. They'll cut off aid to Ukraine if they take power. You heard that right. They want America to switch sides, help Putin win, threatening us with nuclear annihilation. It's sick. It's wrong. It's MAGA. If they win in November, Putin wins, and the blood will be on our hands. The Lincoln Project paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. So important. We cannot forget about what's going on in Ukraine. That is, uh, you know, that has an impact on on a lot of stuff. So, um, OK, so guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to run some of our favorite ads from the election cycle. And then as soon as we come back in a couple minutes, we're going to reset do some more um, electioneering here and find out what's going on with some of our races. We're going to bring in Jacqueline and talk about the union and the grassroots on the ground. We've got Reed Galen and Joe Trippy coming up too to drill down into some more things with the uh, with the races and what Lincoln Project has been doing. So don't go anywhere. Check out our ads and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. We need to send a very big message to the federal government that we're not going to take this anymore. We need to fire the federal government. Interesting idea. Maybe it's a good idea. Of course. 42% of Arizona's budget comes from the federal government, so that would require a 72% increase in state taxes to fill the gap. You got that kind of money? No more Social Security checks. No more Medicare. Luke Air Force Base? Gone. In fact, say goodbye to most of the Air Force, Army, Marine bases all over the state. Arizona students would need to figure something else out because federal student aid would have to go. And sadly, all the national parks, including the Grand Canyon, well, they'd have to close. And we'd also lose all of our air traffic controllers, which sounds fun. But hey, drug traffickers would be happy. There wouldn't be a DEA in the state anymore. We need to fire the federal government. Right now, Carrie Lake is just a kook with crazy ideas. But if Arizona elects her for governor, her crazy ideas could crush Arizona's economy, raise our taxes, make our communities less safe, and turn Arizona into a national joke. Does this still sound like a good idea? Every soldier swears an oath. Not to politics or party. Not to liberal or conservative. They swear an oath to defend and protect the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic. I'm Blake Masters. Blake Masters has contempt for our service members who have served and sacrificed for their country with honor and respect. Our military leadership, totally incompetent. Blake Masters has never served. These people get promoted by giving politically correct PowerPoint presentations. And his ideas are an insult to everyone who ever did. Basically, every general above a two-star at this point is some kind of left-wing politician. That's not conservative. They need to be fired and retired. That's not patriotic. You take the most conservative hurdles, you promote them to general. Think about how crazy that is. That's f***ing crazy. Pennsylvania's story is the story of America. Our nation was born in Philadelphia and saved on the fields of Gettysburg. But today, a man who has been part of attacks on America from within wants to be our governor. 
Doug Mastriano could have stood with those bravely defending the Capitol that day. Instead, he stood with the insurrectionist mob that assaulted police officers, with those who chanted to hang the vice president as they smashed windows and waved the Confederate battle flag. Mastriano was investigated by the FBI after lying about where he stood that day and who he stood with. The truth was Doug Mastriano is the very enemy he once swore an oath to stand against. How could this man be our governor? Pennsylvania's story is the story of American patriots. Doug Mastriano's is the story of a traitor. The Democrats had no clue who they were running against in 2016. They have no clue who they're running against in 2024, and that's why they will lose. Will Trump run in 2024? Will he run again in 2024? Will they once again embrace him? A lot of them want Trump to not be able to run in 2024. I believe former President Trump will not run for president. He won't win another national election. Donald Trump was never going to run again anyway. He is going to run again. Donald Trump will not run. There's no question in my mind he will run. Here's the easiest three predictions in the world. 78% of Republicans want him to run. Trump will run in 2024. We'll stop that not thing to get back into the White House. He will get the Republican nomination. There's no question in my mind he will win the nomination. And whatever happens on election night, the next day he will announce that he won. It's official. Donald J. Trump is now the 45th and 47th president of these United States. America is the only country founded on an idea, the radical idea that citizens could govern themselves. It was called the American experiment because there was no reason to believe it would work. A republic, if you can keep it. Every generation has been called to defend and renew the promise of America. For some, it was on the battlefield. For others, it was on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Now, the battle has come to the steps of the Capitol itself. Democracy is under assault like no time since 1860. We have a choice. Look away or stand up and fight. It's not about conservative or liberal. It's about freedom versus autocracy. We didn't choose this moment, but history has chosen us. Which side are you on? The Lincoln Project is responsible for the content of this advertising. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the screamers, the criminals, the carnival barkers and their loyal clowns, the ones who don't like differences. They hate the rules and they have no respect for you. You can't reason with them or disagree with them. They glorify villains and vilify heroes. About the only thing you shouldn't do is ignore them because they have a plan to push America backwards. And while some may see them as crazy, we know they're dangerous. Because if we don't fight, the people who are crazy enough to think they can stop progress will. Well, folks, I appear to be back first. There's Tara. <laughs> I'm here. We're back. We're back. I was just like, yes, now it's my turn. <laughs> oh, no. I was not letting you have a Rick after dark moment without me on election <laughs> night. No, 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 no. That's for later because I didn't say what was in this cup that I was drinking. <laughs> I'm well, you know, I water. haven't had any alcohol this evening. No, it's just water. I can't drink. Or for some time. But well, I can't that. drink because I have to go on MSNBC at 2 a.m. I'm doing the, the late night oh. on MSNBC. 
2 a.m. That's happy that's election loyalty. night. That that that's like that's like <laughs> commitment right there. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I'd be up anyway, so I figured, okay, fine. They asked me, I'll do it, and and we'll see where we are. 2 a.m. It could be things are going to be a lot different than they are right now because we'll have a lot more results in. But anyway, um, as I promised, here we are. Welcome back to folks. If you're just joining us, this is our special edition of the breakdown, the election night edition that we've been waiting anxiously for for <laughs> quite some time. Um, and we're going to bring in some more of our Lincoln Project partners and advisors and principals who make the magic happen. And um, we're going to bring Philip back in a little bit to give us an update on some of the key races that we've been watching. We're going to have Reed Galen and Joe Trippi join us in a little bit to uh, drill down a little bit more on some of the areas that we've been paying attention to in some of the Lincoln Project work and why you guys should care about all of that. But first, um, I wanted to bring in um, someone who has worked her ass off organizing an absolute amazing, amazing grassroots clearinghouse in partnership with the Lincoln Project. And uh, Jacqueline Westman has just been amazing running the union. We have been promoting this. It, the union started about a little over a year and a half ago, a year ago, a year ago. Year ago. Yeah, and um, it is incredible what they have been able to do. Um, and I want if if Jacqueline's ready, let's bring her in because I think it's important. There she is. There's <laughs> hey, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. How are you, Jacqueline? We're hey. so happy to have you. And we, you know, our listeners and our viewers, they hear us talk about the union. We've been sending them over to go join the union, and boy, have they been signing up. So it was it was important, I think, for everyone to see you and hear from you. Uh, on some of the things that you guys have been doing and also for us to also say thank you to all your hard work and efforts. So welcome. Thank you, Tara. And thank you, Rick. Um, and everyone, Democracy Defenders watching, um, I could not do this on my own and just really proud uh, to be part of this uh, grassroots coalition. Um, the union uh, just started less than a year ago in January. And um, it feels like it was so much longer ago. <laughs> this is this election cycle. It felt like it was three years ago. Totally. Um, and we are a single issue pro-democracy coalition um, of people and organizations. And um, it is volunteer driven. It is a self-organizing force of 62,000 members and growing. Um, which has just been really incredible. And we have 72 partners nationwide. Um, and it's just been really inspiring just to see everybody get out of their bubble and do everything and anything possibly uh, to defend democracy. <laughs> it, it is it, the work, as you said, Jackie, you know, the 62,000 volunteers that have signed up. Uh, and folks, this is a little different than a lot of volunteer organizations because we try to match volunteers with other groups and campaigns and causes and organizations. And it has really been a new model, hasn't it, Jackie? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very different way of approaching it um, and you know, matching people with their skills and their interests with, with places and folks that need them. Yeah, we, um, you know, the beauty of the union too is that um, folks have come from all different aisles, right? So whether you are Republican or independent or Democrat, um, we are Americans first. And um, you know, there's more to grassroots organizing and more um, things that you can do besides door knocking and phone banking and texting. And with the union, we have used so many of our members' talents, um, you know, whether it's been with research or data, um, building websites and, and, and intel, um, you know, and even with using folks' talent as graphic artists and designers. And that's been really amazing because we all bring something to the table and we all have a voice. And um, that has just been being able to partner with our, you know, partners throughout the nation and some of our target states and really funneling actions directly to these volunteers um, is something that we're really proud of um, and have really made a big impact um, everywhere, basically. <laughs> Well, speaking of that impact, um, some of the places that the union has really had uh, an influence has been in key states that we've been paying attention to, attention to like Nevada. See, I got it. I did it. I did. We, we did a Nevada nice, uh, town hall. I've been, I've been messing it up, though. It's going to forever be Nevada. And I'm forever going to think of the deep, <laughs> the deep you know, scene where she, they're t telling her how to pronounce it properly. But when I can remember, I will try to pronounce it right. Nevada and Arizona. 
And right now we see that there's some, you know, there's there's hearings going on in Arizona. They're fighting to keep the the polling places open longer because they're claiming that there has been issues with voting and it's 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 already brewing now but talk a little bit about some of the work that you have done uh that the union has done in arizona and nevada as we are now coming to um the 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 polls closing there or some of the calls to action things that you guys have done there yeah um really amazing work and just want to thank all of our um volunteers and members and state leads in nevada and arizona um but We've knocked on over 3,000 doors um, within Maricopa County and um, Clark County. Um, and right now, uh, a lot of our members were poll watchers and or have been driving folks to the polls, um, which is really important. Um, you know, the last 48 hours, the GOT efforts were, you know, getting in front of voters and meeting them where they are. So that was tabling at grocery stores or mm -hmm. um, speaking to people at the bank, um, you know, if you're pumping gas, just anywhere and everywhere. Um, and that has just been, uh, you know, right now, Arizona polls have closed, but in Nevada, folks are in line. And um the importance of just being there and, uh, you know, letting, encouraging folks to stand in line uh, to make sure that they don't go um, is, has been something that we're really proud of. And uh, right now, Lana, actually our state lead in Nevada is um, doing everything she can to make sure. Shout uh, out to Lana. Yes. <laughs> um, but aside from that too, is we've got folks um, who are, ready to sign up for voter protection and help with ballot carrying. Um, and that's something that's going to be really important, uh, you know, after tonight as well. And, and can people still sign up and, and be a part of that? Because there, as we've been trying to reiterate, even though the election results may not be what we all hoped and wanted in some places tonight, the work does not end tomorrow. The work continues. There is a lot of work to do. So, um, so, you know, this is a great opportunity for people to see there's ways that it, maybe they weren't able to do it before the election, but there's still work that can be done post today. Exactly. Um, our work is far from over and we like to say that this is chapter one. <laughs> um, and we will continue to organize, um, year round and days that end in Y. So tomorrow we will be pushing hard, um, we just launched our Action Center, which has been uh, really amazing. And folks can literally go to action.jointheunion.us. And right now, because polls are open in Nevada and California, and there's some really important house races there too, um, you can start, you know, click on one of those actions and you can start um, dialing with our partners and, um, you know, empowering folks to still get out the vote. Fantastic. Democracy at work. Absolutely. Jacqueline, hard, hard at work. Hard work. That's right. We appreciate you guys and everything you're doing. Thank you so much. Keep up the great work. And uh, what did you call yourselves? Democracy Defenders. Defenders. I love it. Is, is there a shirt? Please tell me there's a shirt or there's a hat that says Democracy Defenders. If not, we, will, we should get one for sure. We should sure. get one and I will be the first one to, to don it because I think yeah. that's fantastic. And thank I just you. want to say thank you to Angus too, who has been. Yes, at, shout out to Angus. Yes. The best. <laughs> the best. Um, and to all of our, I know so many union folks are watching and are still out there and our social media team, we are pumping actions left and right. Um, and amplifying our partners' needs. So thank you. It's 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 all of us. It takes all of us. So. I, I just and I, I want to for, for folks from the union side that are watching tonight on the stream. We had a lot of folks on the stream tonight. Mm -hmm. For folks from the union that are watching, you know, we did a town hall or with the union folks a couple of weeks ago. We had an awful lot of people on the on the call. And I just want to say one more time, thank you so much for doing the hard work of fighting for this republic and fighting for the democracy in this republic, because. The, 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 no, the door knocking and the texting and all the voter contact that's face-to-face, one-on-one, is something that you can't just invent in a lab. And I, you, know, you mm -hmm. can't just tweet it. You can't just make an ad about it. It really does take people. And we're so honored to play a part in, in helping to organize this. But we're, we're, we're deeply honored that you guys are doing this work um, every day and inspiring other people to get in this fight. That's exactly thank you, why we thank do you, it. Thank you. That's right. That, that's the embodiment of we the people. That's what the founders meant.
Hey, if this was easy, none of us would be doing it. So that's right. That's exactly right. (laughs) Democracy doesn't defend itself, as I often say. Jacqueline, (laughs) thank you guys. And thank you to your entire team. We really appreciate you. Yes. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Tara. All right. Now get back to work. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. But she is, though. Um, I'm I'm glad she was able to take the time. Um, So as promised, we're going to bring Philip back because we need to get some updates on some places that we've been paying attention to. Philip, welcome back. Hey, hey, how are you? All right. Talk to us. What the hell is going on out in Arizona? I, I mean, we as we were on air, we were talking about the fuckery that would probably happen is happening as we speak. What's going on? Well, you see in a lot of polling places, especially in Maricopa County, where they're just having some issues uh, at, at these voting centers. And you already have Kerry Lake and Blake Masters and the Arizona GOP coming out and screaming voter fraud. Uh, I saw earlier today, uh, I, I want to say it was Ted Cruz that was tweeting directly of at uh, Katie Hobbs and blaming her and accusing her of trying to steal the election. Now, are these anything, is this stuff that's out of the ordinary or is this, is this something that people should be concerned about? Or are these just kind of the glitches that go along with running a really large area? I mean, we're talking the Phoenix area and the suburbs there mm-hmm. of of Arizona. It's the most populous part of the whole state. Um, or is this legitimately something that people should be alarmed about? So this was actually a password mistake. This, this was just something that occurred with a couple of the locations. They had an issue with machines. They're getting them back up and running. And you have to remember in Maricopa today, you know, they're processing over 200,000 voters, like at the moment, they're going to keep doing that. And the number's going to keep going higher. So there might be an issue here or there, but this is not fraud. It's insane. Right. Right. Oh, we, I mean, but we knew this, right, Rick? This yeah. is the playbook. We, we knew this was we, going to yeah, happen. We, we fully expected this to be a key element there. Uh, you know, uh, I, I want to move from Arizona briefly, Philip, to Georgia. What are you hearing out of Georgia right now? So Georgia, it's, it's a little tight right now. Uh, you know, we, we've seen Warnock is... is <sighs> Stable around 50%, kind of dipping below, coming back. And uh, Walker seems to be around 48% the last couple updates. You know, we're waiting for some of the Democratic heavy counties to come in. So DeKalb being one of those. Uh, you know, once those start coming in, we're, we're expecting it to get a little comfier. But this is not going to be, you know, a, a major margin. for. So we are, do you think we're going to stay out of the recount zone? That's the real million dollar question here. For the love of God, I hope so. I, I'm right there with you, Tara. I, I think it's going to be tight. Um, there's a chance, but I, I wouldn't take that yeah. you know, to the bank. But the good news here, though, is that the the counties that would favor Warnock have yet ha- are still coming in. Right. There's still a hefty number of votes. I saw that yeah. it was, what, 50, 59% reporting? Well, look, but- 65% of the cab is in right now, according to CNN, right, at the moment. Mm-hmm. And if it holds at that trend line, he's going to open up several thousand more votes yeah. in the lead. Right. And a lot, and of the, right. a lot of the small counties that I can see on the map. They just Southwest, don't have the numbers. In Southwest Georgia, those are literally, you know, onesie twosie like thousand vote two thousand vote counties that they'll whack up a bit so um i think one of the things to drive home here is we are still seeing warnock overperforming biden and in some counties overperforming obama Uh, so in in Chatham county for example you know about looks like a little around 50 percent maybe a little more at this point is in uh, and again still overperforming biden or biden and obama uh, so we're, we're seeing that across these counties that that goes the same for, uh, you know, North Carolina in a couple of those counties where we're seeing Beasley overperforming both Obama right. and Biden in some of those counties. But uh, I would say to your point, Rick, as we start getting more of the Democratic vote in from these heavy counties, uh, you're going to see them open up a little bit more. Believe. Do we have any updates on what's happening in Virginia two and seven? That's the the Loria and Spanberger races. Let's see. I can try and pull that. And the reason why we keep going back to that is because, like I said, those are districts in the, well, the Spanberger district is just outside of Washington, D.C., about an hour. Um, And she's one of those Democrats that was vulnerable but came in in 2018. Right. They redistricted. Um, She's a moderate and she's up against a, a Trump crazy. 
And so depending on how that goes, this was a, a, a district that was plus six for Biden last time around. Glenn Youngkin ended up winning it um, last year. Uh, unlike Wexton's County, which was Loudoun County, part of Prince William County, uh, that was a plus 18 district for Biden. So she handily won. There were there were some concern about that, but she actually handily won there. But Loria and Spanberger are in much uh, a much more precarious situation because right. of redistricting. So right now we have Spanberger down 48 to 51. Oh, yeah. So yeah. let me let me move on to the next big question that, that a lot of people I'm getting messages about right now. Uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio are now starting to really roll in some numbers, and uh, it looks like Ohio is is as Dan Rather would say, tight as a tick. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else, Rick. It's after I nine. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well behaved. Go ahead, Philip. <laughs> Uh, man, uh, well, yeah, you know, Tim Ryan, it uh, looks like he has about a 21,000 vote lead at the moment statewide in Ohio. Uh, so about about 2%. And it looks like about 18% is in over in Pennsylvania, give or take. Uh, so over in, in Akron, you know, we, we have Tim Ryan currently up 69 to 31%. You come down to Stark County, uh, same thing, 23 to uh, 23,000 votes to 20,000 votes. He's his leads aren't extensive, you know, where he is up out outside of Franklin County. You know, that's kind of where he's run up quite a bit of a lead. And then you have up in Cuyahoga County, uh, mm -hmm. where he's leading by about 80,000 votes. Uh, last County, Lucas County over in Toledo, uh, looks like he's up about 21,000 votes. But, you know, Rick, for the you know, <laughs> comparison of how tight that race is going to be, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. In, in Pennsylvania, it looks like. Shapiro is is outperforming statewide. Uh, Fetterman by about seven to eight percent at the moment. Mm. I am not like surprised that. by that, just because of Shapiro's, uh, you know, having pulled the worst possible Republican opponent um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and running a damn good campaign. Yes, running, running a solid campaign throughout and keeping his eye on the ball throughout. Um, and I, I think that's going to be a a very meaningful. Um, a very meaningful, you know, effect on that race. Well, I'm, we'll we'll see. I mean, we still have like that. That is one that we're keeping our eye on, particularly for the Senate. That's just you know, it's it's just so close. I can't take it, and I can't take it with Georgia either. I just don't know how I could ever stomach a possible Herschel Walker senator. I just can't do it. Look, I um, I. I <laughs> That race, we're, we're going to spend a long night on that race, folks. I'm oh, my God. Well, right I'll now. be up at 2 a.m. If, if other people who are awake, I'm sure I'll be talking about it on MSNBC. Before we let you go, um, Philip, any word out of Nevada? What's so another Nevada. close one? <laughs> well, Nevada is one of those, especially with, with Clark County uh, coming in today. We, we've been expecting, Vegas. yeah, uh, the Vegas area, we, we've been expecting to see uh, some movement, especially in, uh, heavy Republican turnout today across the state of Nevada. What, what we weren't expecting, and, and some of the other folks out there, Ralston, for example, you know, understanding Nevada in and out, uh, it looks like he was expecting to see a little higher Democratic turnout. But the one thing I, I do want to note is the culinary union in Clark County. And a lot of the unions and a lot of the Democrats are turning in their ballots the voting centers instead of going day of and voting day of. So Good that point. I mean, that's going to come in later. One other thing I do want to note, a couple other things I want to know. Before you move on that, that what I was told is that that was part of the Democratic ground game was mm -hmm. that that was part of their organizing effort was specifically to turn their ballots in that way. So mm -hmm. That so it should be reassuring in some, you know, for some folks who thought, uh oh, wait, what's going on here? No, this was actually the plan for them to do that. Yes, yeah. yes, and, and they're doing that. One of the things that just have my papers here with all my numbers on it, uh, we're seeing Republican turnout at about looks like 48, let's see, 45 percent, uh, Democratic turnout at about 26 percent, and then you have independents making up the gaps. We were expecting that. We're expecting to see heavy Republican turnout. Right. On, on election day. On election day. One of the nice things, and this is something that has started to change a little bit throughout the course of the night, is younger voters. Younger voters are starting to make up a larger portion of the electorate. So voters under 40 have actually matched the turnout of voters between 45 and 64. 
So wow, that, that's that's been very very good to see. That's unusual, and yes, I'm great. To, that's Teach great to Gen see. Gen X a lesson. Uh, yeah. Listen, leave my generation alone. <laughs> well, Gen Z, Gen Z, I don't want to forget about forget about us. Voters <laughs> under thirty are now twelve point seven percent of the electorate today. So that's that's fairly significant as well. And isn't this the first election cycle, or was or the next one where millennials will be the largest portion of the electorate? Right. Yes. I will, yeah. So, so you boomers um, are, are getting bumped out of uh, the first first place there, Wilson. So, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I am in the very. <laughs> there is a definitional nature to, to to the boomer generation, and that it is is it socially ended the day John F. Kennedy was killed. I was born the day before John F. Kennedy was killed. So I'm gonna I'm gonna claim X, and I always sort of have, uh, but. You, but are, you're not though, are you? I, I have no, I have no boomer affinity. Oh well, other than the bald hair. Okay, <laughs> on that uh, bald. I've hair. been bald since I was in my thirties. I can prove that one. <laughs> but you got to But you, you have to tell everyone your your uh, election oh, yeah. day so, tradition. So folks, uh, just like baseball players or, or or athletes, a lot of political people have an election day tradition. I broke my election day tradition one. Oh. fucking time since 1988 okay one time in 2016 i broke the tradition and i did not do the two things get a haircut and eat mexican food today i have gotten a haircut as you can see i'm sleek as a seal yeah um it doesn't take a lot they just sort of like run a blade over the head area um <laughs> and 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 had delicious mexican food before the before the uh, show tonight although tara was repping me like not too much <laughs> I was like, please don't have too much Mexican food before the show. We're doing two hours. Wilson. Oh, is there enough Mexican food? <laughs> oh my gosh! I did okay. ask the question at dinner. I was like, can one be said to have eaten Mexican food if one does not consume a margarita? Now, just for the record, I did not. But here we are. Well, so, that's, well, the tradition continues. Yeah, Philip, the one year, the one fucking time I didn't course, do it was 2016. Of course, and and you know that's always it's always how it goes. One time, the one time you don't do it is when it you know all hell breaks loose and whatever the tradition is, and that's why they have to stay traditions and you can't break them. Philip, um, what are you doing the rest of the night? Please, are there are there beverages involved? Are you gonna you know stick to uh, diet cokes like Rick or what? Before we let yeah. you go, because we got Joe and Reed coming up. There are a lot of numbers involved, and there are a number of white claws involved. As well. <laughs> okay, that's a very Gen Z answer. I don't know what a white claw is. Anyway, <laughs> Philip, thank you so much. We appreciate all your hard work, and uh, keep us informed, my friend. All right, thank you. See you, Phil. So I, all, I kind of know what white claws are, only because. They, but my favorite thing is the picture of Philip and Andrew both dressed as Steve Kornacki. Oh, that's great. In the see khakis? That one no, in the chat. oh, no. I have to go back and look at it. Um, but I maybe I can, I, I will get into White Claws. The only time I ever saw Michelle, it, is why can, I someone, know, can someone get that picture? Yes. And maybe we could put it up. Is when we went tubing and I saw a bunch of people had these White Claws in their, you know, in their coolers for the tubing. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I realized, oh, it's like a, there's this, this sparkling, you know, seltzer alcohol. It's still thing. malt liquor. Yeah, it, it doesn't really do it for me. I, no. I, but that, that's only recently. Anyway, all right. On that note, as we move over from White Claws and, and Bald Heads, let's bring in Reed, Galen, and Joe Trippy. Speaking of bald heads, <laughs> we've yes, got one with hair and one without. In this, in this organization, hey, the, way well, up. no, no, no. I got a little. Joe's, I got Joe's a little. Got, I just got, still a little. got some. Joe's yeah, yeah. I was talking about Reed. Yeah, <laughs> I got none. I did not get my hair cut today. I did cut my own hair on Friday, though. <laughs> but did you eat any Mexican food, Reed? I did no, not. I had, I, had a, I had a lovely sushi lunch with my wife, which is not something I normally get to do during the week. So, you know, election day does have its advantages. We like that. Trippy, you've worked on uh, dozens and dozens of campaigns. Uh, do you have any election day traditions? Can you hear us? Uh, no. Uh, I usually put myself on the plane, on the phones. Am I cracking up? Uh, uh, I usually put myself on the phones. I think that's the best thing for a campaign manager to do at this point in the, you know, during the day today, you know. But, right. do you, but you don't ever, there's no like, you know, you make sure you drink like two Diet Cokes or, you know, you, you, you turn around three times in the, in the bathroom and they go, okay, that's it. Like there's no, there's no 
election day traditions that that you that you do i don't have any either i, I just i don't know i'm always no, doing mine is like no day. sleep for three days before right. election day. oh well that's just, just, just like normal keep pushing though. through no yeah. sleep yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That's par for the course. Par for the course. <laughs> I usually do have quite a lot to drink by midnight of, of election night because at that time you've about had it and you don't give a fuck what the results are anymore at that point because you just you just can't do it anymore. So you throw a few back. Um, so guys, we we are, as you know, we've been talking, we've been watching some of the key races. And um, you know, Reed, you've talked about um on the podcast, you've talked about on the, on lunch with Lincoln. Um, the importance of us defending democracy, right? A lot of people have been like, oh, you know, the, the polls is about economy, and blah, blah, blah. Nobody gives a shit about democracy. But, you know, we take issue with that because when democracy is is uh, being chipped away and the freedoms are gone, all of a sudden people are going, how the hell did we got here? How did we get here? We're going to be like, well, we told you so. What are some of the, what, what are some of the key races and things that you're looking at right now? How are you feeling about it? Well, and, and uh, I'm, I'm first and foremost, thanks for having me. Um, look, I think that as we as you, Philip was just talking about, you know, I think that that uh, uh, Attorney General Shapiro in Pennsylvania looks pretty good uh, to win there. Yep. Um, I think Governor Whitmer looks pretty good there um, for us. Right. Uh, if we can if we can help get Governor Evers over the line in Wisconsin, excuse me, then we've secured, from my perspective, the existential, the most existential states of such a, such a thing exists uh, for 2024, because as we know, um, a Democratic, big D Democratic presidential candidate nominee cannot win uh, without those states in 2024. Uh, unfortunately, the other two states that we, we looked a lot at, uh, Nevada with Governor Sisolak, I mean, Philip said, you know, who knows what's going to happen, right? There was all this screwiness with the ballots there, yeah. um, you know, Kerry Lake in in Arizona is obviously a very scary proposition. Um, so, you know, those I think what the races we're looking at, you know, it's good to see that in Virginia, they just called it for Abigail Spanberger. So they, they did. did. Wait, what? What? Yeah. what? They did? What? Yeah, I saw Larry Sabato called it. So. Oh, yes. Professor Sabato, so, who I work uh, with at UVA, he's the best yep. at the crystal ball. Wait, oh. no shit. Yep. Yeah. That is that yeah. that is so, oh that is a big deal. So that's good, and you know she's Fucking also a, one Bubba. that she, she's Woo! also one that um, Liz Cheney went and campaigned for. That's right. Um, and I think that that's an important. Oh, that's thing. a that's um, a that's that's really yeah. good news, guys. That's huge right. News. I mean, they the 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 Virginia State House there, you know, did everything they could to draw her within an inch of her life, and, and yeah. they tried to, and they failed, mm-hmm. and so that's a good one. Um, you know, I think that what we saw too is that. You know, in a place like Pennsylvania, if if Shapiro clocks Mastriano like we think he might, he might be enough to pull uh, Fetterman over the line um, just because so many more Democrats theoretically are turning out. It's been great to see. I'll tell you this. It's been great to see these. Li- you never want to see lines at polling places because, you know, mm-hmm. folks are waiting in them. Right. But it's great to see them, especially on college campuses uh, in places like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, where, you know, somebody predicted earlier that. Uh, Dane County, where Madison, the capital of Wisconsin is, uh, but also where the University of Wisconsin is located, might have something like 85 percent turnout. And as Joe knows better than I do, I mean, that is enormous. Um, sure. I mean, for a long time, Russ Feingold won mm-hmm. Wisconsin with nothing but By Dane winning County Dane County. Wisconsin. That's right. <laughs> right. So he just crushed um, him in Dane County. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> right. And, and so, you know, look, I, I think that that's good. Um, you know, Rick, you and I were trading notes earlier about uh, Fulton County and, you know, good yep. turnout for, for Senator Warnock, uh, Atlanta. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think what we've been talking about here is that, you know, the the Republicans and, and the, their media machine started a couple of weeks ago on this whole red wave and all these crappy polls they were putting out, which then merged with this red mirage. Well, if we're losing, it must all be stolen. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems like, and Joe has a better sense of this than I do probably, that, that, that the truth will probably be, at least I hope, somewhere in the middle, which is, you know, it'll be like a negotiation. It's a little bit of a mixed bag. Some people are very happy about some things, very unhappy about others. Uh, but I'm curious to see uh, how it's all going to turn out. And remember, too, that there's a lot of this stuff we won't know for a couple of days. Yeah. Joe, as the resident Democrat here among us, <laughs> um, these are your people. Yeah, Talk I mean, to us. What are you looking yeah, at? Yeah, no, the thing that, that uh, I no, you had the well, you had the uh, I, I, earlier you had some folks from the union on. And I think that's that just shows it struck, you know, 62, 63,000 people out there who are working to, to gin up, get out the vote and pound the doors, knock on 
uh, you know, call, call, you know, hit the phones. Um, and when you're looking at how close all the, uh, it's just clear, look, tonight's going to be a bunch of very, very close races. Even Sherry Beasley in North Carolina, uh, uh, you know, is, is right in this thing. Um, uh, right now, I think she's fallen behind a bit, but all these places are, are places where everything that right. the union did that those volunteers out there, um, were, you know, have done is, it is going to make the difference in these close races where we, where we actually pull it off. And, you know, hopefully that'll be Warnock and Fetterman, um, and, and the races that, 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 uh, Reed talked about, you know, the critical sort of, uh, the way we targeted at the Lincoln Project, uh, you know, targeting more about defending democracy, which race, Secretary of State's races and others that were uh, the governor's race in, in Pennsylvania in terms of being in Michigan, uh, being uh, uh, more a threat to democracy to the future. Uh, and the work that the union did, which I think is just incredible stuff that like, you know, uh, we haven't. I don't think talked about it a whole lot, but no one ever asked anybody who joined the union for a penny. It was right. all we wanted was your talent, mm -hmm. your sweat, your time. And damn it, thousands and thousands of Americans showed up, Republicans, Democrats, independents, um, forgetting about past differences. But we're going to come together and, and try to make a difference in these races. And, you know, it's it's cool to be working with Reed and Rick and Stuart and you and coming up with some of the create, you know, thinking about ads and stuff. But what's even cooler is just to see uh, how little help from the Lincoln project to start the, just to launch it, to give it some legs and then watch all these volunteers and Angus and everybody step right. up. It was just incredible to, to be part of and re really and, proud and, of the effort that they made. And, and let me just say, I mean, guys, you know, on a, on a, in a, in a camp, in a cycle where there's something between, 10 and 16 billion dollars are going to be spent yeah. right yeah. Yeah. angus and angus and jacqueline created the union and with with phil and andrew helping on recruitment yeah. and so many other people mm -hmm. for the cost of setting up a website literally that's the cost right this the cost all of setting up a place all volunteers truly an amazing thing and and let me just say this you know we get to ask this question you know, are you guys effective? I mean, think about this. And I think that this is one of the great things about, you know, especially having Joe and his team on board and the union folks is, you know, we had our ban in line voters that we've been targeting, right? Those soft Republicans who don't like their own people. We've been heavily invested in um, communicating into the African-American community in places yep. like Milwaukee, Detroit, and Philadelphia um, with their union partners across the spectrum, right? Uh, politically, demographically, everything else. And, and, and then, you know, and, and the, 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 the iceberg here is, you know, Rick and the creative piece. So people are like, oh, well, do you actually move votes? You just make Democrats happy. Well, it's right. happy Democrats vote and Democrats don't. Right. And if we can be on the ground, remember, guys, we don't have to win every vote. We have to win enough. Mm -hmm. And that's what all of this is about. It's Rick. Rick always talks about this. It's the game of small numbers. That's right. And so if all that work is cumulative and additive to ensuring that a Tony Evers gets over the line by 10,000 votes. Like, great. All Done. you need is 50 plus one, as yeah. they right. say. That's all it is. <laughs> That's right. Um, Joe. Which you that know, may be necessary in Georgia and Georgia, Carolina. In Georgia, literally. Yeah. In Georgia, right. literally. You know, um, you know, Joe, it's uh, some of the, what do you say to some of the people who have been already writing the obituary of the Democrats and, and, you know, the armchair quarterbacking going just, on? What do you say? What do you think about that? I mean, like I said, we're, we're all reformed Republicans. So it's a little well, bit of a different role for us. You know, first of all, it's what, it's what Democrats do. It's like the <laughs> circular firing squad. It starts out weeks before the election. It really gins up the day before. I mean, talk, the people on cable, you know, already yesterday talking about, how we got it all wrong. We, we, we look, uh, it, instead of shutting up and getting out there and doing the work, uh, and, and, and inspiring people, uh, like the union does to, to get involved and, and, and to, to do every damn thing we can. It's just crazy. And it's, a, it's one of the reasons I joined the Lincoln project was, um, 
look, and we've proven it over and over and over again. We just, as Democrats, just aren't good at the fight. We like to talk about policy. We like to, and no, you got to hit and you got to hit just as hard as they do. And, you know, and, and, and you got to be, you know, with real strength behind it. And um, mm-hmm. instead of, you know, on T, oh, gosh, I don't know. We should have done this. We should have done that. I mean, the day before the election, two days before the election, what the hell good does that do anybody? Right. Uh, I mean, like, look, I don't agree with James Carville a lot. I mean, I agree with him a lot. I don't agree with him a lot. But damn it, at least he, he he's one guy who knows how to punch. He sure does. Uh, it's just uh, we need more of that. And that's why that's why I joined the Lincoln Project. I, th- I think there are two things. I think we need Democrats need to understand the fight we're in, not the fight we 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 want to be in, as Trigby right. would say, mm-hmm. but the Trump, the fight we're in. And two, um, we all do, and this is where the union comes in. We we've got to do it. Yes, there's got to be a hard punch. There's got to be people making the case uh, where Democrats won't or can't uh, the way the Lincoln Project can. And at the same time, there needs to be a, a, a someone out there leading the fight to bring Republicans, Democrats, and Independents together in a pro democracy coalition that says this isn't right or or left. It's not Democrats versus Republicans. It's all of us, and it's going to take right. all of us. That's right. Uh, to defeat this anti-democracy, the enemies of democracy, that are that, and hundreds of them are on the ballot tonight. Three hundred. We'll, yeah, we'll be able to defeat <clears throat> a, 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 a number of them. We won't defeat enough of them because right. <laughs> this is not over tonight. That's a, the yeah. other a, a piece of this is that I think is the reason. Uh, uh, that I, I came into this is that uh, it, this fight, it, you know, no matter how well we do tonight, uh, it's not over. It starts up. Get everybody take a rest uh, for for a few days. Unfortunately, hours maybe because, at this rate. Yeah, because <laughs> we're be right days. back. You know, Trump's going to be right back in it. And by yeah. by the way, that's why we're in it because we got to stop him. That's um, right. Yeah, and if anybody and if anybody movement. thinks that tonight's good results won't encourage Trump and his and and, and the bad results won't yeah. just he won't just ignore them, he's going to look at anything that's an uplift and say, "I made this happen. This was me." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he'll he'll he, I, and I, I will tell you this: you can see you, you can see Trump's gears turning last night during that speech. Yes. Of yep. positioning yep. for next week uh, when he announces for, he's going to run again, and. And you can see Jared's program of popping Ron DeSantis escalating minute by minute by minute all day today. Thus, so, the, thus the stories in the Times and, and Bloomberg today already. It's already starting. To, to Joe Trippi's point, I want to run this. Um, but before I run this ad, uh, just a couple of, of race updates. Reed, you said that uh, Michael Bennett has won re-election for Senate in Colorado. That was one that yeah. we were a little nervous about. So thank God for yeah. that. Well, um, and you can actually thank Donald Trump, I think, for that. Because yes, you can. Uh, O'Day, they asked O'Day, I think last week, what he thought of Donald Trump. Said, "I'm not really thinking about that guy. I'm running my own race." And Trump, like clockwork, came out and said, "This guy's not an America firster. He's not going to yep. win." And all the magas on the Western Slope probably voted for Lauren Boebert and skipped O'Day. And Michael Bennett, who is a terrific guy, yep. goes back to the United States Senate. Also, we- the head fake in uh, the head fake in Oregon looks like it's not going to make it. We haven't got the numbers back yet. For the governor's race, yeah, but that yeah. looks like that, that looks like the Democrats still going to squeak that one. Well, um, but let's let's. I want to run this the the vote for America ad yeah, because okay. I just Terrific. after what jo- Joe just said, I think that's important because it's in line with with uh, the fight and why we do it and why it continues. The election is ending, but how the story ends is up to you. And what America looks like on November 9th is a choice. Your choice between democracy and autocracy, between hope and fear, between the rule of law and violent chaos. One day and one vote can make all the difference. Join the millions of Americans shaking off the propaganda and fighting back against the phony narrative that this election is already over. So if you've been down, stand up. If you've been depressed, fight on. If they tell you to shut up, sit down 
or go home before your vote is cast. Get loud. Remember, the magic of America is that one vote makes all the difference. Vote for your family, for your freedoms. Vote for America. I love that. And shout out to our own uh, Michelle Kinney for the voiceover right. on that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Look, look, Big time. I mean, this is the other thing. Can I, can I just, can I, I'm sorry to steal this. Can I just brag on the team for a second? Of I mean, course, look, Reed. We got, we got folks out there creating nationwide v- volunteer groups with a website. We got Michelle who not only manages the entire creative operation for Rick and makes all of the creative cats. It keeps me from running out. around like a wild animal. <laughs> it, well, to, to, to the extent that anything. Well, right. <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. Right. I was going to say, um, I'm not sure about that, but okay. <laughs> but also like, also is, get, can come in and do a voiceover on a moment's notice, exactly on tempo and exactly on tone. I mean, guys, I just can't, I can't brag on them enough. You know, I got, I, I talked to just about everybody on the team today and it, it's just, is it heartening as it could be? to see everybody in here. And they all know, as, as Joe just said, like, you know, they're going to get some, they're not going to get much sleep tonight. Maybe they'll get a little sleep tomorrow, maybe some Thursday and Friday. And then from one fricking frying pan right into another. We, 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 we are doing folks something the Lincoln project has never done before. We're taking a day off for the team. Don't tell anyone. What are you doing? Stop giving it away. You don't tell them. Then you know Trump is going to bump up his announcement and, and like announce the day. <laughs> no, that- I'm not going to say what no, day. It Donald. Is. <laughs> Listen, there's, there's always someone standing at the mast with the pirate flag, right? That's exactly right. right. That's exactly right. We never really take a day off because fighting for democracy, you can't take any days off. But nope. um, rumor has it someone, a couple people may actually, you know, put their phones down for a few hours and, and uh, take some time for themselves. But, but Reed, I know that the entire team appreciates that and, and, and how much, you know, how hard everyone works. People have no idea how, how what, a, what a small, tight ship the Lincoln project actually is and all the different faces and voices and young and old black and white that all contribute to, um, to the Lincoln project. So um, we want to say again, to thank you to everyone that doesn't, the people that you see and don't see um, to help make the magic happen. As they say, Um, as we close out the night, um, I, I just wanted to reiterate to so many folks that even though we are starting to see results, some good ones that we like, there may be some that we don't, And this is not the time to feel despair. There's no time for that. This is just one battle. The war continues and the work continues. And we see that we are just a piece in this. We may be the the tip of the spear in some areas, but we are just one piece of it. It it, it takes a, a collective effort. And I've always said that the righteous anger of the American people, when it is directed toward causes like defending democracy or doing the right thing, rejecting the division, the hatred, the chaos, the corruption. When it comes down to it, I feel that the righteous anger of the American people will prevail. And that's what we are doing. We are, we are channeling all of that in in the Lincoln project way. And I just want people to do not feel hopeless. Do not feel despair because it's not over. America is still worth fighting for. And this, we are all still in this fight. And we want to thank all of the people who continue to be in this fight with us. Final words from, uh, from Trippy and, Rick, and Reed and Rick. Look, I just think this is uh, going to be a long one. Uh, we may not know some of these races for weeks or, you know, or definitely at days. Uh, and I think there are going to be some surprises. I think we're going to feel pretty good about it. Uh, but I agree with you, Tara. It doesn't, you know, the, the ones we we're disappointed in, there's no time for despair. We know Trump will be announcing soon. And 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 either way, Trumpism and the MAGA crowd cult isn't going away. Uh, right. It's going to keep fighting on. And, and and, you know, that's that's the real measure now is that uh, this is going to be a long, a long fight for to protect and preserve our democracy. And uh just so proud to be part of it with all of you who are watching, uh, with all the volunteers in the union uh, and all of you guys. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, I just think in the end, uh, it's all of us to get, it will take all of us. I know we keep saying that, but it's the truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 
if, if we all of us keep plugging, um, keep moving ahead, uh, keep in the fight, and understand that every victory is sweet, but we've got to keep moving to the big one. And the and and that will be in 2024 when <clears throat> we we finally, I think, hope uh, you know take Trump out of this. Uh, we did it once before. Yeah, we, we've done it we, before. We That's had a, to do it the again. purpose. <laughs> it's the purpose of you know. It's why we're here. Let's go do it, guys. Reed and Rick both had some hair before that. That yeah. started. <laughs> you know, look, most people don't know this, Tara. I'm 24. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at what it's done to me. Look what they make you give. Um, yeah, just to, just to echo on Joe, what Joe said and Tara, what you said too is that the, we always knew uh, going back even a year ago that 2022 would be the way station on the way to 24. Uh, we never really had any doubt. I don't think that Trump would get back in just mm -hmm. as much as we're the anthropologists of this guy. And um, as much shit as we took for saying it, remember that? That wasn't oh, that sure. long ago. Oh, Rick, remember, Rick right. and all everybody, they were apoplectic about Rick saying that he was going to get back in it and, and all of that. And we're like, okay. Left left um, and right. Left mm -hmm. and right. We had yep. people right. on the left like, how dare you say his name? The former guy, yeah, he'll never right. be back. It's like Voldemort. Yeah. We're like, have you not um, been paying attention? <laughs> like, go ahead, Reed, But sorry. that being said, you know, the 2016 race was one thing. The 2020 race was another. The 2024 race will be different. We don't know how yet, but it will be. Um, you know, the people that Trump has around him are much more talented and much more serious types than they yes. were in certainly in 16, but even in 20. Yes. Um, he knows what he's doing, right? He's no, he's no, I mean, for all of Trump's shortcomings, and they are infinite, um, this is a guy who knows exa knows exactly what he's doing on any day on any given day, and we shouldn't underestimate that. And you know, we are a divided country, and you know, so much of this stuff, Rick, you and I and Trigby were talking earlier. You know, to have I mean, every every campaign has infinite variables, um, but to have variables like we've had that are as big as they've ever been in our lifetimes, or certainly the, right. since we can remember, is something I've never experienced. And we should expect that, like. You know, they, you know, they used to call black swans like something that happened every hundred years. Like we literally live in a pond of black swans. Now, <laughs> yeah, right. So right. like that's just like they're everywhere. <laughs> and we just have to accept that and, and take them as they come. So, um, you know, we'll have a lot more to say about what comes next and how we're going to, you know, get into this. But just please, everybody know, as I turn it over to Rick, say thank you to everybody out there, everybody that supported us from the get go. Uh, if you're if you've been with us since December of 2019, if you've come to us in the last day, we're welcome. You know, we we always are expanding, um, but we will be here in the fight. And we have, uh, you know, we it, the, the the last thing I'll say is that when you're exhausted, the option is not to quit, but to rest. So take a nap right. and then get back to it. <laughs> that that's sounds always, great. That's always the solution around here. Is, yeah, is take, like, a, take a nap. Take a breather. Get yes. back in the fight over and over again. That's right. Rick, so. before you give your final words, I just want to um, give a quick couple of updates real fast. Um, <laughs> so that that uh, judge's order in Maricopa County about keeping the, the polling locations open, that has been denied. So the polls are now closed in Arizona and the counting commences. So the RNC, Bannon, Cary Lake shenanigans, they tried to pull so far has failed with uh, with the courts uh, in Maricopa County. Um, one other thing, there was a quick question um, earlier in the first hour. We Rick made a little funny joke about um, Tom Brady and who the Yoko Ono of that relationship was. And there's a there's a guess about it. OK, from a viewer. OK, Rick said one blonde and one was brunette. So I'm guessing Ivanka or Kimberly Guilfoyle. Well, it's definitely not Kimberly Guilfoyle. Well, mm. let me just say this, like, mm. let, let me just say this. The Trump family and extended family is like if the guys from Mad Magazine wrote Game of Thrones. Yeah. I mean, for Christ's <laughs> sake. <laughs> it's just like, you yeah. couldn't, you literally couldn't make it up. <laughs> uh, that is unbelievable. And um, that's a good one, Reed. Well done. Well done. Um, we had one other one other thing. Oh, the, the picture of, of Andrew and Philip as Kornacki. Do we have it? <laughs> <laughs> see we don't need msnbc or cnn on election night we've got our own right there <laughs> philip and andrew <laughs> oh my god i love it i love it i love it oh on that note rick wilson bring us home on this election night folks it's been a long year for america 
Uh, I want to echo what Reed said and thank every single person who has supported the Lincoln Project, who has volunteered in the union and these and these amazing folks that have been out in the field, really busting their asses. And and you know, here's the thing: they're Republicans and Democrats and Independents, but most of all, they're Americans. They're Americans who give a damn. They recognize the the the, the danger of the fight we're in. They recognize the real battle that we're in. It's not about imaginary communists or about some sort of Antifa or any other fantasy. It's about a group of people who are determined to break this country. And I want to encourage our friends watching tonight on a, on a really key metric. Do not sink into despair because the Republicans win the House. It would be shocking if they had not won the House. But what you're going to see tonight is not a giant realignment. What you're going to see tonight is not 1994 when, when 54 seats changed hands. It is not 2010 when 63 seats or so changed hands. This is a mid-year election in a crap economy and with a, with a president who's not very popular around most of, the, most of the red states in the country. This is exactly what we would have expected also given redistricting. Now, is it going to be bad because the Republicans are in charge of the House? Absolutely. Should you wake up every day and look at it as an opportunity to mobilize, to educate, to activate people, to point out the shenanigans and the fuckery and the stupidity and the cruelty and the, and the complete distractions of the things they're going to do? Absolutely, you should. Look at their aggression against this country as a weapon for how you organize and fight in 2024. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump will be on the ballot in 2024. He has said so. We have said so from basically the second that his helicopter flew off to Andrews Air Force Base like a petulant little bitch uh, on January uh, 2021. That's coming. It's going to realign everything in the country. It's going to force us back into a political frame that a lot of people don't want, don't like, don't really care for. But it's important that we live in the real world. We're going to be here in this fight. You folks have kept us in this fight. You've supported us in this fight through thick and thin. We've tried to honor that every day by leaning in as hard as we can, by fighting as hard as we can, by doing things other groups can't and won't do. Um, you know, but most of all, what we try to do is give people hope, give people a, a sense that this country is worth fighting for, give people a sense that, the, that being in the fight, being in the battle matters. It changes the outcome, and it does. There was a moment in the spring of this year where someone asked me how many seats the Republicans were going to win. And I looked at all the numbers, and I looked at the polling, and I looked at how badly Biden's polls were looking, and I said 65 seats. They will not pick up 65 seats tonight, folks. Mm -mm. I, at that moment, I also predicted to the same person that Mitch McConnell could have a seven or eight seat majority in the Senate. He will not have that majority. We don't know where that's going to turn out tonight because it's going to be a damn late night and we're going to have a lot of fights in the next few days. But the work that has been done this year to push back in a terrible political climate mm -hmm. is absolutely remarkable and you should be proud. You should be proud of the work you've done. You should be proud of the effort you put in. You should be proud of the courage you showed when the temptation is to pull a blanket over your head and hide in the bed and go away and pretend it's not happening to shut off the computer and to not read the news and to pretend it's not around you. But it is, and you did. You stayed in the fight. That's God right. bless every one of you. Because that kind of battle, that kind of that kind of political yeah. and, frankly, moral warfare that we're waging is the thing that will save this country if we stay in that battle, if we stay in that fight, if we don't blink, don't rest, don't, don't think that you can get out of this by, by wishing your way out of it or that somebody's going to arrest Donald Trump or that you know Mitch McConnell will be eaten by wolves. Those are fantasies. We live in a hard world. You guys have shown how good you are at fighting in that hard world. Look forward to doing more of it. We'll see you guys again very soon. God bless you. Have a great night. Um, and, and again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everybody out there. And as we end, well done, Rick. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reed. Thank you, Joe Trippi, and everyone who joined us tonight. And I want to end on one of our best ads that we recently released. It was our closing argument ad voiced over by yeah. the great Peter Coyote, the country best. over party, because this is what it's all about. We'll see you on Thursday, folks. Thanks, y'all.
Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a good night. America thought it was better than this. Better than weaponized hate and political assassination attempts. An example to the rest of the world, blessed with a tradition of peaceful, fair elections. Then came MAGA. Violence, hatred, and cruelty replaced the old Republican Party. When white nationalists, radical domestic terror groups, and QAnon crazies became the backbone of their MAGA party, millions of Republicans said, enough. Biden won with their support. Country over party, one last time. Soon, Trump will return. The worst of MAGA's extremist wing will dominate Washington. What you decide now decides what America looks like for a generation. You're making a choice. Their America or our America.